दरवाजा बंद करो सो नाउ वी आर लाइव सो वी विल वेट फॉर वन मिनट एट लीस्ट लेट देम ज्वाइन टेन और इलेवन देन वी विल स्टार्ट so without any delay we'll start now so as many have joined okay a very good morning to all of you i dr ankan sinha on behalf of entire organizing committee and my personal behalf would like to welcome you all in this mega event of international webinar on pedagogical approaches to combat covid-19 pandemic issues and challenges which is organized by department of chemistry government degree college dharmanagar in association with nac gdc dharmanagar and igno study center 2602 gdc dharmanagar i would like to welcome all the dignitaries delegates guests present over here i would like to welcome the keynote speaker along with all the six other resource persons who all will be going to deliver their lecture over here i would like to welcome all the teaching and non teaching staff of government degree college dharmanagar and last but not the least i would like to welcome all the participants who who have registered themselves and who have not able to register themselves due to the limitations in registration and i am very glad to say that all across the border or uh, all over from world we have received more than 1200 participants and this this is our great achievement too so as we all know that we are going through a very crucial situation of covid 19 pandemic or we can uh, say it, corona virus which cornered us which locked us inside our home we can't move out what to do we can't move out we are not able to go to the schools and colleges in regular manner or in usual manner then this kind of activity this kind of webinar is the nicest way to impart your knowledge to spread the awareness and to know the knowledge to the others knowledge to all so this is the best platform and in and in this race i can proudly say that our college government degree college dharmanagar north tripura is leading the way why i am saying that because including this seminar we have conducted four national or international webinar in the small small span of one and one and half month so it's a great achievement and many more to come because we are going to uh, conduct um, uh, international workshop in collaboration with international bodies which will be going to organize by department of physical education why i am saying all this because this is the best platform this is the huge platform to communicate to spread the awareness because not only that it is the way to motivate others to conduct this kind of activity so i will move towards the introduction session of the panels we have with us the president of this ceremony dr dilip sarkar sir principal government degree college dharmanagar north tripura i would say he is the man of knowledge in a very small span of his uh, principalship in this college in government degree college dharmanagar he worked day and night for the upliftment of this college and in my opinion he is the perfect and the coolest principal i ever met so thank you sir for always motivate us and allow us to conduct this kind of activity and program and uh, i welcome you sir now we have with us the chief guest come inaugurator of the ceremony retired professor arunodoy saha sir he is presently working as a chairperson 
Tripura State Higher Education Council. As a college and university teacher of high standing, and then as the vice chancellor of Tripura University, Central University, Professor Saha has come to a long way. He was the vice chancellor of Tripura University for a term of long six years, from 2007 to 2013. He had been teaching in Tripura University along with teaching assignments in other universities in the country as well as in Bangladesh. But his career took an upward turn in 2006 when, he, when Tripura University was upgraded to Tripura Central University. So we have such kind of personality with us. I welcome you, sir. Thank you. Now we have with us the guest of, guest of honor of the ceremony, Sri Saju Vahide, sir. IS officer, presently the director of higher education government of Tripura. He is the man of perfection. And through his efficiency and hard work, he lifted up the stature of Tripura as far as higher education is concerned. Even after being a great administrator, he did everything for the academic upliftment. So I welcome you, sir. We have with us the special guest, in the form of Dr. Kiran Sesa Chakraborty, sir. Presently, he is working as a regional director, IGNO Regional Center, Agartala, Tripura. Even after achieving everything in his life, he has the zeal to work for the community and still he is giving his effort to nourish the world of education. He is not only having a vision, but the action too. I welcome you too, sir. We have Thank with you. us the organizing secretary of this program, Dr. Suman Odhikari, sir. He did his post doctorate from South Korea in chemistry. Apart from being a good academician, he's a great manager. I think so, because under his leadership, we got the deserving grade of NAC as far as NAC is concerned. So I welcome you, sir. Now, without any delay, I would like to request the guest of honor of the ceremony, Sri Saju Vahisar, to express his feeling or suggestions for this program. Please, sir. Thank you, Ankar. Uh, respected principal, Dr. Dilip Saka, Government, Model, Government Degree College, Dharmanagar. Respected Chief Guest, uh, Professor Arnodai Saha, ex Vice Chancellor, Tripura University, and Chairman State Higher Education, Vice Chairman State Higher Education Council, and respected special guest, Dr. Kiran Shankar Chakravarti, Regional Director, now and speaker, Dr. Prashant Priya Nayak, Associate Professor, Department of Physiology, AIMS, Jodhpur, Rajasthan. First of all, I uh, thank the organizers. Uh, for taking a step for conducting such a seminar or a webinar on pedagogical approaches to combat COVID-19 pandemic issues and challenges 2020. Uh, with this, during this time, this pandemic situation, the most important and most affected sector is education. If we consider the economic and other parts, it is slowly, slowly moving up and getting to into the phase of unlock. But only one sector which could not unlock and which is still going under lockdown is education sector. And most affected group is our students and our teachers are not able to have a contact physically with our students. And the pedagogical approach, which is the at a juncture where a major or a radical change is happening in the pedagogical approach. All the academicians, administrators across the world is thinking about how to go about, how to go forward in this pandemic situation. Across the world, all the educational administrators are in a confusion. When will be the schools will reopen safely and smoothly, how to conduct the exams, how to do the physical classes, 
the effectiveness of e-learning the importance of digital divide which is coming up and how to go about the e-learning and provide the necessary engagement to the students and also to keep their learning and other things pedagogical things and the curriculum activities intact without affecting them our students are in a dilemma they are thinking about their, their future the students who are about to appear for their entrance examinations and higher educational admissions and also in the school level are thinking about how they will be able to write their exams go to the schools meet with their friends so this is a time where all academicians across the world and all the thought processes all the planning and the planners are thinking about how to get forward and how to get rid of all these stumbling blocks despite all these challenges we could not forget the opportunities given by this particular situation where being a director of higher education i should proudly say that this might be around 25th or 30th webinar out of which huge number of international webinar and being a state in the northeast we were able to we are fortunate enough to get the expert advice and the expert speeches by eminent speakers not just from tripura not just from northeast not just from across the country but across the world we were fortunate enough to listen to the professors eminent professors from across the world we got eminent professors from australia we got eminent professors from us joining us in webinars barring all the geographical barriers barring all the internet uh, issues and other things we were able to come into a single platform as ankan have rightly pointed out the pandemic situation have opened up a very huge opportunity before us by bringing this online platforms and others to bring all us together and also discuss on these matters i really hope this webinars and academic discussions will definitely nudge at least around 20 percentage of us so that we will think in a different way so that we will get a different exposure and experience and that will help our students in the future and also academicians does not focus on higher education institutions and academicians does just does not just focus on the students or the student community but they also thinks about the major issues faced by the society and comes up with solutions so i hope the situations will nudge the academicians across the world to think in that, that direction and bring up with new ideas and new thought process so with this i would like to conclude my speech and once again thank all the organizers for conducting this webinar and also inviting me as a special guest or guest of honor wishing you all the best and uh, uh, thank you so much thank you sir thank you uh, for such a motivating words and I, we will keep all the things whatever you have told to us in our mind and proceed in our, our life so thank you sir for being the part of this seminar thank you sir now now i would like to request the inaugurator and the chief guest of this ceremony professor arun udar saha ex vice chancellor of tripura university sir please uh, say a few words for motivating the participants please sir thank you sir thanks ankan uh, dr dilip sarkar principal dharmanagar degree college sri saju wai director higher education government of tripura dr kiran shankar chakraborty director regional center igno and professor prashun priyo nayak aims joypur rajasthan who are present in this inaugural session uh, with uh, us there are other participants in uh, around not in northeast not in india abroad also we are told really i am thrilled to be part of your program Uh, i must congratulate at the outset dharmanagar degree college for organizing such a beautiful 
our webinar program on pedagogical approaches to combat COVID-19 pandemic issues and challenges. It's a privilege for me uh, because you have asked me to be with you. And I must say at the very beginning, I, I, I felt a little bit of nervous, you know, uh, because uh, this kind of communication is not very old. It is very new. And, uh, and I, I am a firm believer this kind of exchange of ideas across the, you know, avoiding geographical barriers will finally survive, will finally last. Anyway, let us get back to our program, uh, International Webinar Seminar on Pedagogical Approaches to Combat COVID-19 Pandemic Issues and Challenges. You know, uh, COVID-19 is an unprecedented crisis, an incident or pandemic of its kind in a century or in a lifetime, never ever witnessed. So it is a new kind of challenge. We must face it. And every crisis comes with some new opportunities. Let us grab the opportunities with all sort of preparation and enthusiasm. Instead of waiting for things to come back normal, we should adapt ourselves to new normal situations. We shall equip ourselves to overcome the you know, limitations and difficulties posed by COVID-19 in the recent times. Nowadays, in conventional and traditional kind of teaching learning system, we used to exchange uh, our ideas as a learner, as a teacher in the classroom. But due to pandemic situation, as our director told, uh, Sajuji just mentioned that uh, it is really difficult to open the schools, students to come in the classrooms because, you know, lockdown situation is prevailing. So given this situation, how to overcome the, you know, limitations? And that is uh, what is, you know, planned here over webinar seminar. Remote learning is an option. It is a must. Uh, it is must in the sense since we are barred from meeting students in the classroom and students are away from the schools and institutions. But, you know, all can wait, but education cannot wait. So there must be some alternative ways of reaching the students. Students should have access to the teachers. How to do that? The platform is this kind of platform through the remote learning system. And with this kind of system, uh, what is known to be uh, better known to be information and communication technology, the, it is going to be the only, apparently, only, you know, way to combat the challenges posed due to the outbreak of coronavirus. Because, uh, first of all, uh, we must survive. We must not get exposed to this danger of coronavirus. But at the same time, we should continue our teaching learning process. How to do it? And this is the way uh, through uh, you know, this kind of arrangement, one we can reach, student can have access. Uh, actually, this is not a peculiar situation or unprecedented situation only for Northeast or Tripura. All the world is suffering uh, this kind of uh, pandemic situation. So what we should do now, we must think globally, but act locally. Actually, we must have other kind of experiences uh, and count uh, the, you know, other states, other countries, what they are doing. And from them, we should learn, we should pick up, and then we should act in our uh, situation. Thinking globally and acting locally is the just, you know, one way of combating the pandemic situation arising due to the coronavirus 
problem. And one more thing I'd like to mention here is this. Uh, due to pandemic situation, a lot of opportunities are, you know, closed. But new, new opportunities have come up. You, that is the beauty of life. Life is a dynamic kind of <coughs> uh, situation. <coughs> Sorry. Actually, I tell you one thing. Long back, uh, when I was a kid, we used to go to the school and we had our own kind of, uh, you know, schooling system uh, using slate, pencil and all that. Now, these, those days are gone. The students come to the class with fountain pen, these, these, that, and I am jealous of them. Uh, we, 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 we were, you know, uh, lagging behind, but situation changed. And accordingly, uh, new, new technologies are coming up and they grab it and they have become smarter. We were not that uh, like uh, smart like our younger generation of today's. So whenever new opportunities come, we must grab these opportunities. And then we should make use of these opportunities for the betterment of our pedagogical system and other uh, parts of life also. But I tell you one thing. Uh, we are, uh, I should blame myself. We are a little bit conservative. I remember when I was, you know, college student, probably uh, studying presidency college in uh, West Bengal. Those days, the computer revolution started abroad and, you know, facilities were coming to about were coming to Calcutta and other places. But for some reasons or other, you know, we did not welcome computer. And we lost the opportunities, came to us, but we refused to, we denied the uh, facilities uh, of computer those days. And we now repent because we are far behind of other countries who have done a lot of development uh, using ICT uh, because uh, ICT is a key of success nowadays as I uh, consider. So what I mean to say is this, when some opportunities, possibilities come, we must seize these possibilities for the benefits uh, it is going to give us. We must not, you know, uh, go, uh, you know, uh, must not uh, fail to avail this use of these facilities. Actually, uh, we must not put the cart before the horse. That was the practice of our earlier uh, times. Now time has come. World has become a small village. What is going to uh, happen uh, this say, half an hour back elsewhere in other parts of the world? Immediately we know, we come to know. So why we should not be at par with the other uh, countries of, of the world? So my request will be to our coming generation, young generation, all to see that latest pedagogical development must we must not miss. And this platform that, you know, now we are interacting uh, not to... Uh, facing each other in the classroom, not in a traditional, conventional uh, way. But that is a new kind of uh, system we have developed. So we must not miss these opportunities. Once we shut the door, uh, then not only, you see, fresh air will not come, truth will not be allowed to enter. So we must be wide open. We must welcome the changes. So. While taking the advantages of technology to make sure that learning never stops, we must also be responsible so that the digital platforms are used sensibly. My point is this, we must not uh, be lagging behind, but at the same time, uh, we must be alert 
that when some opportunities come, it comes with some challenges also. Because you see, I am praising ICT like anything, but it is a fact. The student teachers staying in the cities, uh, in the metropolis, they have easy access to this kind of ICT. Is there uh, any guarantee that ICT will reach the remote places of Tripura, say, Ganda Chora, say, Gurakappa? There are students. They are not going to get the uh, opportunities. So we should see that there is a big challenge. You know, we, we cannot discriminate. Uh, if there are some gaps, gaps should be breached. The discrimination must not prevail. How to do that? Yes, it can be done. No problem. Because, you know, reaching a remote place, you know, crossing rivers uh, or the road communications uh, may not be so good. How to reach them? But now ICT has opened up, you know, the, as I mentioned, even physically you cannot reach the places. But through ICT, uh, through you know, that opportunities given by the uh, technology, we can reach. But point is that we must have infrastructure. Yes, uh, that is not a big thing to do. Uh, nowadays, as I know, even remote places everywhere in the remote places can be reached uh, through uh, internet, through other things. Maybe it is not... Uh, so good, so reliable, so dependable. I would rather request to make this structure of infra ICT must be made uh, reliable, dependable, and we should have access to the students who are waiting to get uh, themselves updated. So this challenge, there is a challenge, and challenge, it is not a really challenge. Uh, we should, if we, mm, you know, uh, have the infrastructure to reach them, it is possible. And again, I must say, there are other challenges also. In the era of new challenge, teachers are also placed under the same uh, uh, disadvantage situation. Uh, it is very interesting. Nowadays, nowadays, teachers are not all uh, the time teachers. Students are not all through students. Students are teachers. They can teach. They are smarter than our, uh, you know, teachers. Because both of them, teachers and students, are, you know, they start from the same uh, point. Uh, the ICT is not very much, you know, known to teachers also. So students, if they, uh, you know, take time, go through the you know, facilities of ICT, then students, maybe some of the students are ahead of teachers. They are capable of, you know, sharing their experience, ideas with the teachers. So there is the division between teachers and students. Teachers know much more than the students do. No. Students can be, you know, uh, able to teach many things which to teachers are not knowing. So it is very difficult. There is a thin thread uh, hanging between the uh, teacher students. And as I mentioned many times, you know, we may be of uh, high age. I mean, we are old people, but we keep on learning things throughout our life. A, 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 a person remains students, keep on learning uh, till the last day. And if he ceases to be uh, learned, he is no longer uh, a teacher or a student. My point is this, there are challenges, but challenges can be, you know, sorted out uh, through dedication, commitment, and other kind of sacrifices. And finally, uh, I must say that the COVID-19 provides us with challenges and opportunities. We must not miss the opportunities. Rather, we should seize the opportunities in our favor and turn the all disadvantages into our advantages. 
And I personally believe, I firmly believe, that this is possible. There are advantages, there are disadvantages, but disadvantages can be converted into advantages. And finally, I like to mention that there are a lot of, you know, difficulties, limitations in pedagogical uh, delivery. But if we are sincere, we are, you know, committed, uh, we mean student teachers all, the challenges remain no challenges at all. We can challenge the challenges also. That is where we now stand. Technology is at our service. Because, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, I always say like this. It, you know, there are many countries that in and around. There are developed countries, underdeveloped countries. How to measure the development? The, uh, you know, number of population, the territorial uh, geographic area. Oh, no. There are little, you know, small state with uh, not, not much population there. They are ahead of many countries. So it is not the geographic area. It is not the population. It is not the other kind of resources. It is the human capital having access to, having access to technology. If a, you can check, uh, if a country is having access to higher level of technology, it is bound to be above, ahead of other all countries. So it is the index of access to technology, which determines the place of the country. We are behind, we are backward, we are remote, we are underdeveloped because we are smarter than any other people ac around the world, but we do not have access to the technology. Now time has come, thanks to COVID-19, COVID-19 com is compelling us to go for higher level of technology so that the gap is minimized and we can reach our students, students can reach to the level of knowledge, domain of knowledge. So I like to conclude uh, here at this point of time uh, with this, uh, just one sentence uh, I'm repeating. Uh, this is, there are opportunities. We must seize the opportunities in our favor and turn all challenges disadvantages into our advantages. That is the message uh, for today. And okay, let me conclude once again. I must congratulate uh, for arranging this international webinar on pedagogical approaches to combat COVID-19 pandemic issues and challenges by Dharmanagar government degree colleges. I particularly, personally convey my Thanks to Dr. Dilip Sarkar, the dynamic principal of Dharmanagar uh, Degree Colleges. And I, I will fail to, uh, you know, my duties, not duties, in uh, mentioning the names. If I miss to mention the name of Dr. Onkon Sinha, Secretary Teachers Council, who is, you know, steering the entire program so uh, effectively, successfully, uh, I like to put on records. They are uh, put on record of appreciation for their work done. And along with Dr. Onkan Sina, uh, I must mention the name of Dr. Sumon Odikari. He is the organizing secretary. And I have come to know he has a uh, wide exposure. Uh, he has done his postdoc from North South Korea or some other places. You know, we are proud of them. There are sometimes we feel so... Uh, Frustrated, our teachers are not doing good job. Oh no, there are teachers. They are not, uh, you know, drumming their own. Uh, they are not uh, talking high about themselves. But yet, silently, they are doing good job. And thanks are due to them. Once again, I congratulate and thank Dharmanagar Government Degree College for giving me the opportunity, for giving me the, you know, opportunity to uh, deliver the inaugural address to all uh, across the globe. Uh, and I wish, uh, as, as we were assured at the beginning, Dharmanagar 
government degree college will continue to organize these kind of programs in near future. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for praising us and uh, educating us through your vast experience. And it is really a treat to hear you, sir. So th thank you once again, sir, for accepting our request, sir. Thanks again, sir. Thank you, Thanks. sir. Thanks a lot. Now we have with us the special guest of this ceremony, Dr. Kiran Sekhar Chakraborty, sir. I welcome you, sir, and request you to deliver your speech over this uh, seminar, webinar. Please, sir. Am I, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Perfectly OK. Uh, uh, Namaskar. Good morning to all. Uh, Respected Professor Arunodar Shaha, Chairman State Higher Education Council, uh, respected Director of Higher Education, Government of uh, Tripura, respected Principal, Dharmanagar Government Degree College, Organizing Committee, uh, especially Ankan and Shumon, and respected Professor Naik. Uh, respected other resource person, faculty members, my colleague, and my dear student. It's my privilege to be here with you all in this platform. In this platform, I mean webinar. Uh, thanks for providing me this opportunity. In view of pandemic situation in the world, the education sector of our country and uh, is one of the affected areas. I think uh, the organizer has rightly chosen the theme for the webinar. The, as we know, the emergence of coronavirus has led to the greatest global health crisis since uh, 1918 Spanish flu pandemic, as I remember. The COVID-19 pandemic will go down in history as a global health crisis, I believe. And that caused significant loss of life and massive economic and social disruption. This pandemic has direct impact on our social, cultural, and economic life. There is no doubt about it. The severe impact has thrown a challenge to every aspect of our life. However, its impact on economy at large, and especially education in specific, is a matter of serious con concern, especially for the policymakers. The COVID-19 pandemic quickly led to the closure of universities and colleges around the world in hope that social distancing could help to flatten the infection curve. According to estimation by UNESCO, almost 70% of the world's students are not attending school and colleges. About 60 million students across the globe are limited to home during the that crucial periods during the months from February to June. Institutions and Students are under pressure to not lose academic time and reinvent their teaching learning process in any way possible. What does this man mean for the academic institutions and students? What does it mean? Yes, I'm talking about the changes in pedagogy for education. Pedagogy for education, we should give a serious thought on this issue. We understand that the pedagogy for primary education or seg secondary education may not be the same the pedagogy for higher education. The approaches for technical education or professional education, and to be very specific, stream like medical education may be totally different. But we are observing that the 
entire higher education system is undergoing a paradigm shift in terms of pedagogy what several futuristic and education technologists have been forecasting for long especially in india is now happening the pedagogy in education has started through informal stage say for example in our country its gurukul system was there from that stage to formal stage and then move to non formal stage non formal education starting with the correspondence course to open and distance learning then open philosophy online learning e learning and now blended learning to my knowledge in this unprecedented times e learning online learning and blended learning can support the learning in formal education sector too we are also experiencing that the lockdown has accelerated the process of adoption of digital technology educational institutions and online educations have been forced to work together and improve in quality and deliver in time to handle such a situation even though if we do not like to work together that is the educational institutions or online education or digital education this is perhaps the need of the hour again i would like to observe and firmly opine that this is an ideal time to experiment and deploy new tools to make education delivery mechanism meaningful to students who cannot go to campuses it's a chance for us to be more efficient and productive while developing new and improved professional skills and knowledge use of technology in education is also resulting in different concepts in the system what i have noticed we are moving from the teacher centric education to student centric education which was an integral part of open and distance education now it is spreading to the formal education sector also online education network in india is expected to grow about 247 billion us dollar by 2021 it is an estimation of course this is a compound growth rate of 52% the number of learners enrolled for various online courses is estimated to be around 9.6 million by the end of 2021 it is found that online education is more preferred because in it is cost effective and efficient nearly 48% population in india between 15 to 40 age group with high aspiration for higher education but lower income is a target group for online education and the acceptability of online channel and education is high in the younger demographics these factors clearly show the future potential of online education in india accordingly our policy makers in educational sectors are taking appropriate steps to cope up with this situation as we understand the shift in pedagogy of higher education will depend on several factors of online learning online learning is not merely a library of videos lectures and ebooks and convert class notes into pdf sometimes we confuse delivering lecture online and online education is the same thing we should not confuse these two things creating high quality digitized learning content must be contextualized to make learning interesting as well as encouraging doing this takes a rare skill which few organization in the world can boost up universities 
need to collaborate with such organization for their digital pivots to be successful. I have no hesitation to say in this context, IGNO is a global leader in this direction. Online learning is not about one pedagogical model, but an aggression of various models. And it is needed a specialized learning science that combines learning psychology, behavioral analytics, content delivery, and assessment to measure individual learners' progress. However, I believe even in the post-COVID-19 era, do you think that offline or conventional education will be obsolete? Of course not. I don't think so. They will survive. To my knowledge, blended learning, I mean a combination of classroom and online moves, will be the new norms. That is the point. New normal. Institution and teachers will blend the two judiciously according to the context and the content. I repeat this to context and content. New technologies including the emerging science of artificial intelligence and deep learning models can help to create customized learning plans and methods. Higher education institutions must embrace this quickly to overcome the ills of current digital education. Ladies and gentlemen, to my knowledge, educational resource play a vital role for quality education. Now, available open educational resource may help to the, especially college and university administrators, teachers, parents, and learners during the closure of educational institutions. You, are, you, have, you perhaps have noticed that the um, government of India, as well as state governments, has regularly been publishing information on various initiatives undertaken by them to support and benefit the students. A few of the initiatives are, just I would like to mention its name, Soyam Online Courses, UGPG MOOCs for non-technology courses, EPG Partshala, e course, NEET, an initiative of AICT in collaboration with National Digital Library, and so on. All these may enhance our ability to connect easily with institutions, enhance our access to learning resources, especially during this pandemic period. Before I conclude, I appreciate the college authority for arranging such a wonderful initiative using this platform. I understand the difficulties to be tackled by the organizer to conduct the webinar through online. I'm sure the participants will be immensely benefited from this webinar. I wish the success of the webinar. With this, I conclude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for uh, such a enriching uh, lecture, sir. And I am wondered what uh, how one can have such kind of means enormous amount of uh, knowledge in oneself. So thank you for enlightening us and showing us the path to go. So well, thanks once again, sir, for being here. Thank you, sir. Namaskar. 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 Now, now I, I would like to introduce to you all the keynote speaker of this ceremony. He is none other than Dr. Prasun Priyo Nayak, presently working as an associate professor in the Department of Physiology, Ames Jodhpur. He, is, he has vast teaching and research experience of 20 and 25 years, respectively. He has around 42 publications in his name. He is the lifetime member of various national and international bodies like IBRO, ISCA, ISS, IPI, PI, APPI, and many more. He is in 
editorial board and reviewer of many national and international journals. He was the gold medalist of Vid uh, Vidya Sagar University in two, uh, 1989. He was awarded with number of numerous awards in his name, like Professor S. B. Despande Award 2018 of Association of Physiologists of Indian India for best research work in neurology. Professor P. B. Sen Memorial Oration Award and Professor B. B. Sarkar Memorial Oration Award in 2017 and 2011 respectively by the Physiological Society of India and many more. Many more awards are there in his name. It will take whole day to say about his achievements. So without any delay, let's have the opportunity to hear him. So please, sir, I welcome you, sir and uh, welcome you sir and enlighten us please uh, i would like to request you to enlighten us with your lecture sir please sir thank you very much uh, i hope i am audible yes sir so nice of you it's really nice to <laughs> hear good things about uh, self you know so nice so nice of you it's really wonderful and i must uh, convey my Thanks to the organizing team and uh, specifically Dr. Udhikari. I am in touch with him for long. We are uh, jointly doing some research work also. And uh, obviously, this is a nice uh, opportunity and uh, nice initiative from the Department of Chemistry, Government Degree College, along with IGNO. And I really appreciate. Uh, this type of initiative and this type of uh, webinar, international webinar. Uh, I really remember in my visit to Dharmanagar Government College and it was so nice and I really uh, feel like uh, missing this. Hmm. So I would, uh, with this I would uh, go into the topic today. So uh, the theme of this today's webinar is like uh, pedagogical approaches to COVID-19 pandemic issues and challenges. As a keynote speaker, I really thankful to the organizing to giving me this opportunity uh, to uh, initiate the uh, scientific session of this webinar. And uh, what I thought I should give a overall view about the uh, COVID-19 and then why it is pandemic, how to combat with it and there are some global issues and challenges. So I have uh, divided the whole lecture or whole uh, conversation the speech into two parts. First, we will talk about the basic information, basic principles like on what basis we are, uh, we should be, we should be knowing how to un understand. Uh, it's a basic understanding about the COVID-19. And then we will go into details of combating the COVID-19, how we can protect us. That is very important, how to protect us. And then we will discuss the second half of my lecture will be on the issues and related challenges. There is a disclaimer and I hope you have all gone through this. First of all, we want to discuss about the primary information necessary to combat COVID-19. Next, we will see why it is called pandemic and then we will see the issues and challenges. In the primary information, we will like to know about what is COVID-19, how it infects us, how deadly it is, how it spreads, how to identify the infection, how to avoid the infection, and how to protect cells from this type of infection. 
what is COVID-19? The first question it comes to our mind. It's a coronavirus. It's a large family of virus, variety, and there are uh, family, subfamily, phyla, and you know, it's a huge range, huge array, and it produces some illness to which ranges from something like common cold to severe pneumonia-like diseases. So, uh, coronavirus is not a single one, it's a large family of viruses, that is important. And this is not the first time we are facing coronavirus. It happened like in 2002-03, first time we came to know about the civet cats, and then uh, uh, it, it was suspected that the coronavirus, though basically it is uh, remain in the animal, bats, from there it get mutated to reach to the civet cat and from there it could further mutated to reach to human. 2002-03 we had that sars cov SARS stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome and cov cov stands for Coronavirus. Almost a decade later, 2012, similar mutation from the bats took the virus to the dromedary camels, and from there it could further mutate to reach the human. And we had another endemic mass Middle East respiratory syndrome coronavirus. 2019, it is expected that there is a a new pangolin, new mutation which could took the virus, allow the virus to infect the pangolins and from pangolins it took mutation and it, took, it came to human and it caused severe disorders. <coughs> Sorry, severe disorders. As you can see that the Mutation is not just only thrice it happened. It happened even beforehand. We, we can see that it, via rat it could reach to cows or it can reach to uh, pigs. But these, these variants, these strains, they were not much damaging, just causing some cold virus, some cold like a influenza like situation. But Mars and SARS CoV, they were little dangerous, they were more dangerous compared to the SARS. However, their fatality rate was too high, something around uh, 2 to 5 percent, 2 to 5 percent range. So, they were, but they were endemic, they were not going into distributed throughout the world. But here, when it uh, latest mutation, it is supposed to be, it is not, we don't have any confirmatory, but the uh, other evidences, associated evidences that such that it is the pangolin and pangolin, it can protect itself from this virus. That's the dangerous part and it can reach to the whole world and we are suffering. Even though the fatality rate is very low, in comparison to the other 2003 and 2012 coronavirus infection seasons. Still, it is causing a dangerous effect because of the high, high infection rate. It has a huge infection rate. We will come a little later. So, what is coronavirus? It's a COVID-19. It is the disease. COVID-19 is the disease and the virus involved is the 2019 SARS-CoV-2. 2019, the origin. In fact, in end of 2019, November, uh, middle of November, it started appearing and by the end of December 2019, WHO accepted it that it has been originated from China, one Yuan process. Now by this time everybody must be knowing about the Yuan province. And from there this virus is originated. This is severe acute respiratory syndrome caused by coronavirus, but 
it's a novel type. So the name of the virus is given 2019 SARS-CoV-2 and the disease is causing the COVID-19. Coronavirus induced disease happened in 2019. So that is what is COVID-19. Coming to the structure must be known by everyone by this time that COVID-19 it has some spike glycoprotein. These are S protein, then there is a membrane envelope, E protein, and from the on the envelope we have the membranous, membranous protein structure, hemoglobin esterase dimer, H E protein, and the E protein, envelope protein. Now within the virus, within the virus, we have RNA is positive sense single stranded RNA which is coated by the nucleocaspic protein. So this is the basic structure of coronavirus that is common for all the coronavirus. However, these spike proteins and the envelope proteins, H E dimer, hemoglobin esterase dimer, they are some mutation so that it could reach to, it could enter into the human cells. We will uh, we'll see later how it is entering into the human cells. The mutation spike protein that we can very important. The spike protein it can bind with the S2 receptor. This is angiotensin converting enzyme, which is very important enzyme in our body. Angiotensin converting enzyme which convert the angiotensin gene to angiotensin 1 and then angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. This is normal angiotensin converting enzyme which is designated as S1. We have another S which is called S2 which break the angiotensin 2 to angiotensin 3. In our body, we always have a system to control the protein, to control the production as well as to control the breakdown. So the S1 protein, S1, the enzyme is important to production of angiotensin 2 and the S2 protein, S2 enzyme is important to cause breakdown of angiotensin 2 so that we can have a required level of angiotensin 2 in our body which is very important with the regulation of blood pressure long term regulation of blood pressure angiotensin is very important angiotensin 2 specific now the coronavirus it has this spike proteins these spike proteins they bind with the S2 receptors in our body, the cells which have which are which are expressing the S2 receptor, they are the instrumental. They become instrumental to bind with the spike protein, and then they activate the spike protein by three-dimensional modification, three-dimensional structural modification, and this activated spike protein allow the coronavirus entering into the cell. In the process of this activation, a transmembrane, type 2 transmembrane serine protease TMPRSS2, type 2 transmembrane serine protease, that is that this enzyme is playing an important role to allow this spike protein to allow this coronavirus who got an activated spike protein into the cell. So, coronavirus which got a mutated spike protein and the cell which has S2 receptor and TMPRSS2, these three things mutated corona, mutated uh, spike protein in the coronavirus at the surface of the coronavirus, S2 receptor and the TMPRSS2. These three things combinedly allowing the viral into viral entry into the cell. Once it enters into the cell, so 
what if cell it has the tmp rss2 and the s2 they will enter into the cell and this cell now this uh, virus now utilize the cellular machinery for converting more production of more viral proteins and rna these proteins and rna they combine together to form the pilvirion and new viruses are being produced so this is how the sars cov 2 is utilizing the cellular machinery cellular protein synthesis machinery transcription translation and uh, process to utilize the cell for their own production and then it's come out so once it inf- what once it get in- activated they enter into the cell and within the cell it start producing more and more for coronavirus sars cov 2 and they come out of the cell into the external surface into the external surface and so they are now ready to infect with more and more cell this is how the coronavirus sars cov 2 that is infecting us to produce the pneumonia how deadly it is let us understand a little bit of data as all of us we know that uh, ministry of health and health has uh, they have created an aarogya setu app for india which is showing that today we have we have lost 87945 total confirmed case and this case out of that we in tripura itself we have 3656 cases as you can see the continuous infection continuous infection increasing infection the level of infection if you see it's growing exponentially this exponential growth both all over india as well as in tripura we can understand this exponential growth is because because of more than one a greater than one r not level r not level is the level of infectability level of spreadability power of spreadability for this virus the r not is somewhere around 2 to 3 and it can be even greater because many places many persons we cannot identify because they remain as asymptomatic we are using a new term asymptomatic means who are infected by the sars cov 2 but not showing the symptoms of covid 19 i am again repeating sars cov 2 is the virus and covid 19 is the disease the person may be infected with the virus but not producing the symptom for covid 19 until now no promising clinical treatments or prevention strategies have been developed against human corona virus today it is news it came into the news that flevitic a new uh, flevitiravir a new viral antiviral drug which has been allowed to be used in emergency situation only so this is only few steps people are working people are working to develop the efficient therapeutic as well as prevention strategy new antiviral uh, which has been already uh, recently developed and that uh, is under uh, csir uh, our research wing indian council of uh, scientific and industrial research they develop this mechanism and they are producing this uh, drug and it is allowed to be uh, used in the emergency situation so it's very deadly completely and we are we have to only option is available we have to have non pharmacological intervention to prevent the spread very categorical very clear till now we don't have any prop 
clinical or pharmacological treatment or pharmacological prevention strategy. So we have, we are left with only non-pharmacological, that means we will come later, like how we can prevent. How it spreads? We have discussed the spreadability and we know the spreadability already. This is uh, the particles, yeah, aerosol, which is produced by the infected person is the aerosol produced, which causes the infection. And this person also can distribute, can infect others by when they come in contact. These two, this go into spreading into the public. So we need to prevent this spread. Other side, the part, or instrument used or any part, anything used by one infected person can be can be the media to cause infection to others, and that can even in long run it can cause spreading of the virus. So this is what we are facing. How to how it spreads? As you can see, every viral, every infected is more than two or three, then how to non-pharmacological, how we can block that spreading? Just by being not doing anything, just not being involved in the spreading process. So if we can cause lockdown or if we can refrain ourselves to have public interaction, then we can minimize the spread. How to identify the infection? Cup, very common. Fever, chills, muzzle pain or muzzle ache. Then shortness of breath or difficulty of breathing. Up to this point, this is very similar to that of any influenza, any influenza like virus. So this is the problem when it is like how to differentiate between influenza and the COVID-19. So we have to be very, very careful, very, very watchful to meaning to get identified. Then, so new laws of taste and smell, new laws, remember this is what very important. Recently some other uh, symptoms are also coming out like diarrhea, uh, so like uh, Sometimes it's a, it can cause it constipation or it can as few points came as like intraoral rashes. So there was some dermatological. So these these are the processes by which it can or we can identify common symptoms as fever, loss of appetite, fatigue, loss of smell, shortness of breath, cough, coughing, sputum, productive cough, muscle ache, and some severe condition. Difficulty in walking, confusion, bluish face and lips, that is sinusitis, coughing of blood, persistent chest pain, disease, decreased white blood cell, kidney failure, high fever, these are the severe conditions. So we need to identify that. How to avoid the infection? Physical distancing, hygienic habits, respiratory protection, protecting soft targets cleaning and disinfecting, self-isolation, hand wash, peer check and protecting the high risk groups. Physical distancing, everyone understand now that we need to maintain around six feet. Hygienic habits like calf hygiene, hand hygiene, all hygienic habits we should invoke and invoke with Respiratory protection like mask, protecting soft targets like we should not uh, uh, put our hand or to the nose or mouth or eyes. Cleaning and disinfecting. Commonly, we should keep cleaning and disinfecting the areas of our body or the parts of the uh, household where we are commonly touching or commonly in contact. Self-isolation. In case you have a doubt, even if it is influenza, let it be self-isolated. You could isolate yourself and not mix up, not mix up, so that you could protect others. And then hand hygiene, if someone is not following the hygiene or not following the physical distancing, let others to talk about it. And obviously protecting the high risk group, those who are in diabetes, so those who are old age, those who are pregnant, for them we need to protect. 
how to protect self what are the mechanism by which we can understand and we can protect ours like now first of all be aware about the covid 19 getting ready getting update about the covid 19 like what we are now having this type of webinar is a very useful fact very useful to to get knowing about the covid 19 this is i appreciate uh, government degree college the monagar to having this uh, uh, type of webinar so that they can contribute and i can also contribute to part of the protect make and protect and mechanism be a suspicious observer be vigilant about likely infected or contacted individuals if you know if you doubt uh, avoid them if you feel like this area this table is likely to be contaminated avoid it if you think that this person or this air yeah, this uh, cloth this part uh, part of the thing this vegetable whatever you feel like contaminated you think like there is a transmission possible transmission of virus be vigilant about it and if possible avoid it practicing hygiene how to hand wash and how to hand rub more many of you also we are using sanitizer and uh, soap If you feel like anything is there uh, in your hand, immediately it should be soap wash. So soap washing is very important, and that you should be knowing about the 40 second mechanism, like uh, uh, Suman ki kalai means. Like first of all, you need to open, take the soap, and then on the front surface, on the back surface, in between the fingers, each finger specifically. and up to the up to the wrist it should be clean and then finally you should clean the tap also but last of all you should not use any cloth to dry it let it dry automatically or from air flow if soap is not available then only you should go into the hand hand rub with sanitizer same procedure to be followed for the sanitization also so for practicing hygiene observe the hand hygiene observe respiratory hygiene cough or any sneezing you clean it protect uh, like uh, if you are uh, not uh, having anything to be busy with keeping the uh, mouth and nose in between the uh, elbow that is also part of it keeping surroundings clean and do not speak anywhere do not allow anyone to speak anywhere so this is this is very important so practicing hygiene is very important to protect self confident avoid social gathering of peers public interaction if required only to limited only those which are required using self isolation when you suspect you may have this infection you should go into self isolation keep your mood elevated keep you having a good nutrition these two are very important to have a healthy life until unless you are healthy there is a chance that you may uh, pray to the virus so be healthy be happy and avoid share personal share the personal belongings so you know what are the personal belongings belongings and Those things you should not be sharing with anyone. Support of fellow and administration. We need to have the uh, like we we need isolation. We need to see that those who are suspected they are in isolation. But we should not leave them. We should support them. We should don't we, we should not leave them like without food or water. We should give them support. Then only they can maintain the isolation. So. If you are in isolation, others should support you. If you are not in isolation, if you see no someone is in isolation, then you should support them. Social networking for support those who are on need. You should be like we all of us. We use social networking. We should know that what is going on and how it is without making the rumors. Follow the rules and regulations imposed, particularly when there is a rule and regulation imposed by the containment zone. lockdown those areas we should follow so that we can protect ourselves this is this is how we we should uh, like these are the minimum requirement minimum basic information about the covid 19 
so uh, we have discussed about what is COVID-19 and then we have discussed about the spreadability structure of it and finally how we can prevent the infection and how to protect us. Now we will discuss about the pandemic, why it is called pandemic. Then we will go into the issues and challenges to combat COVID. The in yesterday, as you can see, uh, the whole world is having infection. Whole world, this is a WHO dashboard. Whole world is having infection. United Nations Development Program also suggested that since its emergence in Asia last late last year, the virus has spread to every continent except Antarctica except Antarctica. So, this is how the uh, virus has been throughout the world. And because of the world basis, it is global effect, which is called pandemic. Now, if you see the pandemic threat, how much threat we have, it is like on last 22nd July, say yesterday, 23rd July, when we noticed it is 612054 deaths, average 14, 1 crore 47,65,000 cases. Yesterday, it was 619,153 deaths, 15 lakh, 50, 1 crore 50 lakh. So, in one day, around 247,475. Uh, 47,475 people are infected with 7,096 dead and India contributed around 49,310 and 740 deaths. Whereas Tripura contributed around 207 infection and one death within this one day. In one day, this much of spreads and this much of death is say, really an uh, issue. Now we are coming to those uh, like issues to combat with the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, the pandemic uh, has been announced is 11th March. It is uh, in 11th March 2019, 2020. It was uh, given as uh, announced as pandemic. And uh, this is last pandemic was around uh, 2009, where it was uh, uh, H1N1 influenza was uh, announced as pandemic. But we didn't face this much of death that time. So we have we are lacking experience. We are not prepared so much about the about the handling this much of pressure. So, United Nations Development, they have uh, suggested that the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic is the defining global health crisis of our time and the greatest challenge we have faced since World War II. So, you can understand how much pressure we are facing, the doctors and public, both are facing the problem, public facing the pain and doctors are facing being a part of the public as well as handling this picture. So hygiene, health and outcome, which all depending on the support system. Administrator, they should be maintaining this so that we can minimize these issues. Unexposed should not be going into the infection or those who have recovered, they should not go into the infection. This type of system is not well prepared. We are not uh, well, uh, really well prepared. Community wise, we are not well prepared. So, overall preparedness, we are not experienced about it. That's the problem. Like uh, recently, news came up that China is facing the second uh, wave of infection. But they are already experienced enough to so that so that we can. Uh, they can handle the pressure of this second wave. So, what are the challenges? 
like restricting transmission is one of one important challenge provide proper nutrition when the people are in lockdown people are in isolation managerial preparedness are the challenges acceptability of by the mass people are not ready to accept the risks and not ready to understand that what is uh, coming in the future so if there is if we need some preparedness and for that we don't have any exposure any experience so what we are doing we are applying some trial and error process we are giving some trial and then which trial is working out better that we are accepting it as the best possible way there may be another option so we need to experience and we need to be ready for this experience that whatever we are trying that may be a failure but it may work also on the other side we have another problem as we can see as we can see the exposure to h co of these strains the, our body our most of the say uh, most of the children they are exposed to this uh, viruses and 60 to 90% of adults are zero positive zero positive means they had already exposure to some extent and then but they didn't have any symptoms these type of virus, these strains of viruses but these body experiences these viruses but this experience is ineffective for the novel coronavirus 2019 so experience we should have and that experience we should take into for the step forward so that we can handle the pressure better coming to the issue 2 where we have i have listed it as management administrative management as well as medical management on the administrative management globally it's a large scale management it took long time to understand that whether it is an infection whether it took it was in november to december two months nearly it took who to announce it as a infection then another two months january february it took to understand to announce it as a pandemic so we, it's a bureaucratic delay that uh, should not happen so large scale global management should be there at the same time we have the center and uh, state level controls and then each one they should take care the early response will be better response but as we we have we are lacking experience we are not ready to we cannot blame anyone we have to understand that we don't have experience about this type of infection this type of pandemic so we don't know how to handle this crisis we have to manage this thing at the same thing it appears in the family level management that we need to understand that if this is if isolation has been imposed on one person we need to go have that isolation we need to impose we need to observe it very categorically then the medical management sampling problem diagnostic problem treatment problem and then follow up problem and support as you understand every day some few thousands of like around 40 to 45 thousands of uh, virus new infections are coming up out of that maybe a few hundreds are going out maybe one or two thousand may recover so every day we are adding the load of new infection to the medical system and that our system is not well equipped not really uh, can cope with this pressure we will discuss in detail about the issues and challenges about the medical management little later so what are the challenges here we need to have an announcement and be clear so that there should not be any bureaucratic delay if it is scientifically if it is epidemiologically if it is understood it is required let it be required. community control if there is a panic many instances we have noticed that community get panic and the management is get lost so we, we, we should have a recovery measurement recovery measure measure uh, taken into the already in place so that we can control those issues distributing resources and facilities we have very limited resources limited facilities so we should be distributing it where it is required so there must be a management procedure there must be a core management system so which will distribute the resources and facilities as per its availability as per its requirement 
obviously we should increase the uh, resource availability so that we can have adequate resources and maintain the supply chain so that resource not only one time because it is having a long gap there is a series gap or series latency of infection each uh, which is around 7.5 days means doubling time doubling time is a little longer for the covid-19 pandemic so we should be having a continuous supply chain for this and information exchange means we should be letting others know what i have failed or what i have gained if i if i know i let others know that i have failed in this experiment that means we are allowing others not to do that so this type of information exchange is very important coming to the economic crisis all of us we are facing this problem even in pre pandemic area we had some economic slowdown unfortunately this happened and this has been added by the lockdown effects the person who are infected by the covid 19 they have the physical inability and along with that we have added up the healthcare expenditure even for diagnosis and treatment we have the healthcare expenditure so all these are originated from covid 19 and they are associated with the along with they are uh, added up with the pre pandemic so economic slowdown so that individuals income is low in fact more expenditure the in individual stock in individual savings is low so that they cannot spend more in the market there will be less revenue generation less national income and that there will be again economic slowdown so that they cannot be invested in the infrastructure all the health setup this is what is we are in a vicious cycle we have to come out of this added up things which are like natural, natural calamities or uh, some uh, some places where there is uh, problems with the uh, revenue uh, revenue distribution so those those things are also problems so let us see the challenges lockdown effect like loss of jobs break in the growth uh, those things are lockdown effect in addition we have income cut down expenditure raise broken chain of supply and added up things are deep share market so we have many challenges in the economic crisis there are many maybe more challenges more uh, uh, details can be uh, explained about it but i am not going into details of those issues yet coming to the issue four which is social threat all of us we are we are uh, emotionally and economically we are interdependent we are depending on the family members we are depending on the relatives friends and uh, like uh, these friends which include the uh, uh, business friends also not only the social friends business friends so that we we are emotionally as well as economically we are interdependent and we, we are social animals we are social being social so we love to we, we we are comfortable when we are socially good social together but covid 19 it has created a problem of physical distancing the social distancing the economic differ differences between the group between humans between individual was there already that was creating the vertical distancing and now because of the physical distancing we have the horizontal problem horizontal distancing problem so these two put together we are creating an inequalities in the society and this will cause uneven distribution of property so that vertical distancing will be further increased and we don't know when we are going to solve we when we are going to get rid of this physical distancing problem so we are going into another vicious cycle apart from the economic vicious cycle we are into the social vicious cycle we i don't we don't know how to combat with it and we are uh, coming up, how we can come up out of this situation challenges for this it includes stresses maybe because of the covid 19 itself infection itself the lockdown effect economic crisis or isolation all these they can be contributing into the stress horizontal distancing or physical distancing could be a challenge over protection sometimes unnecessarily we are like uh, i need a store of say 5 kg of uh, grains 
for my one week but because of uh, the insecurity i i think that okay let me store 10 uh, kg but that 5 kg i am taking from others part so this is how we are going to go into the over protection now recently this that mask uh, use also it came that filtered mask we should not use valve uh, valve related valve, respiratory valve we should not use uh, that is but we are in this discriminatory we are using we don't know that what is required that uh, is required for the medical fraternity so uh, that may be uh, like by consuming that we may be uh, depriving other one person of medical fraternity to have that then self created hostility because of this uh, stress because of the isolation because of the economic crisis we sometimes get irritated so that we can we make the our environment hostile which may lead to the addiction and moral non compliance we are not ready to like okay fine i i am ready to accept these things so which are earlier i am not uh, accepting then the frontline health service very important issue issue five is the frontline health service where we have problems with the diagnosis like starting from the specimen collection experienced health workers needed protection years for collectors required tolerable for patients when we are uh, using the uh, process safer for health workers time of collection when to collect the specimen what type of material or uh, what type of uh, things should be used for the specimen collection physical conditioning if i am calling collecting from the nasal uh, like nasopharynx and nose inside the nose then uh, if we, i will have already inflammation i have already some injury how can i take then transport system so collecting the specimen and transporting through the lysis buffer and maintaining the cold chain leak proof ceiling these are the challenges sample analysis we have to have a artificial method sensitivity specificity cost very important time and availability time how much time it is taking all these becoming a big challenge for the frontline health services apart from that mutation or potential cross reaction if all these process it should be research going on and the best process should be immediately available and uh, whatever waste we are generated that should be properly disposed then uh, treatment and care it's a big issue is that pre symptomatic infection during this period infection and the severity during this 14 days this pre symptomatic condition how, how the level is how the viral load is how the sampling should be done then it could be asymptomatic infection or it can be mild to severe or critical illness depending on what type of comorbidity or the nature of infection what uh, nature of viral load is then in critical illness we have severe pneumonia with acute respiratory disorder ards and death which can be further complicated by bacterial super infection septic shock cytokine shock storm inflammatory storm cardiac dysfunction thromboembolic event renal dysfunction so it's a further further complicated each one is becoming a challenge for the handling these issues it's a big, big challenge comorbidities include older age hypertension cardiovascular diseases diabetes chronic respiratory diseases cancer renal disease obesity these are all the comorbidities each of them they, they become a big issue so we need to challenge we need to face these challenges in the treatment and care we don't have any specific uh, drug yet that's what i have already mentioned however some drugs are being used which are uh, like for used for sars cov and mars cov so those viruses those are being used remdesivir lopinavir retinavir and uh, recently today it is fevirpiravir so these things are uh, it's a big challenge for us drugs to be used what type of drugs we can use procedures to be done safety of healthy or health workers availability of icu beds icu related complications sometimes even the icu itself can be a source of complication then drug drug interactions there are so many challenges about it then covid warriors those who are in the doctors nurses technical staff and other support staff they are the covid warriors they are all the utilizers and management managers in any healthcare facility they have many 
insufficient number is a challenge. Rather than exposure, or adequate number of adequate supply of personal protection equipment, risk of work injury, if damage PPE is given, refresher training, even, even if PPE is there, uh, may not be, I am not trained well to use that PPE. Then long working hours, because number is not sufficient, one after another, one or two days, continuously we need to work. Psychological distress to see these pathogens, see these exposure, see this pain, fatigue, occupational burnout. So uh, we need to we need to give them scope to uh, with the uh, tools so that they cannot they can uh, do the best part. Stigma is there. Then whether there is a physical physical and psychological violence, we know that uh, when the patient dies, how the uh, patient family behave. And then blame-free reporting. These are the challenges we have in our. <clears throat> for patients also, availability of care, updated information, both become a challenge for us. Then uh, respect, compassion, and dignity. When a patient is coming, we should uh, the healthcare workers. They should uh, respect them. False positive report and undue test. We know that these are the uh, paramount important. Then associated health burden. Along with this, we are losing like non-communicable diseases like diabetes, uh, blood pressure. Those processes are not being addressed properly. So uh, hypertension management. You can see the how much it is affecting diabetes, asthma. So which are non non related with the COVID. But because all the resources are being consumed by the COVID-19 so uh, pandemic, so we are uh, facing problems with uh, these issues and these are the challenges for us. Ignorance. Ignorant about the self hygiene We have a resistance. As public, we have resistance towards the screening, isolation and quarantine. As you can see here, this is how the social distancing is maintained. And, uh, you know, it's uh, like uh, panicking, consumption of false antidotes, uh, like uh, somebody said something, we accept that. Fake science, false beliefs, and fraud victimization. These are the uh, issues, these are the challenges we are facing during because of the ignorance. And then, <clears throat> supply chain. Many a time I'm mentioning this, we need doctors, but if uh, doctors are uh, doctors cannot cannot work 24/7 365 days, so we need a continuous supply of doctors, or, uh, so continuous supply of nurses, continuous supply of uh, technicians, so that we can replace them. Diagnostic accessories. We need kits. We need uh, the reagents. We need the instruments. Treatment accessories. Even though the uh, treatment is not clear, but whatever management is possible, that those treatment accessories should be available protective gears should be available. So we have to have a continuous supply chain to maintain, to, to combat with this and the COVID-19 pandemic. Then we are coming to these other factors, miscellaneous factors, like all these things are damaging the whole processes. Actually, further complicating, like flood or say locust infection, locust or uh, this much of population density, this is what we are, uh, this is our problem. Property and seasonal loss, like harvesting loss, or even the uh, persons who are uh, collecting the uh, grains, collecting the vegetables, that is not being sold out. So we are further communicating, complicating the problems. To summarize, we have discussed about the COVID-19, what is COVID-19, how it infects us, how deadly it is, how it spreads, how to identify the infection, how to avoid the infection, and how to protect ourselves. Then we have discussed about the pandemic, why it is pandemic, and what do we mean by pandemic. Then we have discussed the issues, where experience, management, economic crisis, social threat, frontline health services, COVID warriors, associated health burden, supply chain, ignorance and incognizance, miscellaneous factors, all these issues we have discussed along with their challenges. Thank you very much for your presence and hearing. Uh, over to Dr. Sina. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, can you sir, stop the sharing, sir? 
Yeah, yeah, please, please. Thank you very much uh, for your patience hearing. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I think it was a complete package of about the COVID-19, how, what is the base of COVID-19, we learn how to protect yourself, how you will get infection from this means. It is all about the complete package of uh, COVID-19. And uh, we are very, means very much happy and fortunate to uh, hear you, sir. And believe me, uh, I hope you will give us time again and again for this kind of activity, sir. So thank you once again, sir. Thank you. Sir. Now, without any delay, we are moving towards the end of the uh, uh, inaugural session. Let's welcome the president of the ceremony for the presidential address. So I would like to welcome Dr. Dilip Sarkasar. Please, sir. I, there may be some connectivity problem. I think so. Meanwhile, I would like to uh, convey all the participants few things, few instructions about the webinar. Uh, so you have to mention the your name, uh, designation, and uh, the organization you belong to in the comment section as a part of attendance. After that, tomorrow during the last lecture, you will get you will get the uh, feedback link. You have to fill up to getting your online means e-certificate. So you have to watch each and every lecture. According to that lecture, you, will, you may have some uh, uh, questions during your filling up of feedback form. So I think uh, president of the ceremony left the session. He is trying to join again due to some connectivity problem. So meanwhile, Yes, he joined. Now, I welcome you, sir, for the presidential address. Please, sir. Very good morning to everybody. Good morning, sir. Honorable, yeah. Honorable uh, Vice Chairman, Tripura State uh, Higher Education Council. Professor Arunoda Shaha, respected uh, director of higher education, government of Tripura, Sri uh, Saju Ahad, the uh, highest officer, respected uh, uh, regional director, IGNO, Dr. Kiran Shakkar Chakraborty, and uh, my dear uh, colleagues, Dr. Shuman Adhikari and Dr. Uh, Ankan Sinha and uh, other uh, participants and uh, dignitaries. I First of all, I uh, welcome to uh, this uh, international webinar. And uh, I congratulate all the people who have taken the opportunity to participate in this uh, Gala program. And I hope that uh, with the active participation of these uh, people, more than 1,000 people, who have participated in this uh, program. Uh, this program will be a grand success. It is a time, I, actually, uh, the human beings have been facing a great uh, challenge due to COVID-19. And uh, we are uh, facing different types of uh, uh, problems, especially in the field of uh, education. Uh, the students are not in a position to go to the institutions. The parents are very much worried about. The teachers, the academicians are also very much worried because they are not in a position to uh, express their views or uh, lessons to the students in normal way. So uh, the 
academicians have to take the help of the technicians so that uh, they can reach to the students. Moreover, uh, in this situation, uh, we have to think about what uh, is the priority we have to give. Whether we will uh, uh, confine ourselves in case of uh, giving lessons to the students, or we will try to find out a solution by which uh, we will be able to overcome the crisis which has been posed by COVID-19. Personally, I feel that uh, the scientists have been trying a lot to find out the vaccine so that we can uh, vanish uh, COVID-19 from this world. And uh, personally, I hope that uh, we would be able to succeed in that case. But before that, already uh, we have learned a lot from the keynote speakers how to uh, uh, be aware of uh, the from uh, the touch of COVID-19. Though by the course of time, lots of people have uh, lost their life. But even after that, uh, we are uh, in a position to uh, fighting against the COVID-19 that uh, somehow we would be able to overcome that uh, trouble. Human beings have uh, crossed that type of crisis uh, throughout the world uh, during uh, past uh, many, many centuries and uh, depending on this uh, so I personally believe that uh, we the human beings at this stage would be able to overcome that kind of situation also though we are uh, facing uh, different types of problems especially in case of uh, students uh, they are very much worried uh, how they will continue their uh, teaching learning process they uh, how they will be able to uh, acquire uh, knowledge but uh, I feel that um, along with the other academicians uh, that uh, uh, we cannot, uh, as this is an extraordinary uh, situation, uh, this is an abnormal situation. So we have to take uh, some uh, tools by which we will be able to sideline the uh, uh, COVID-19 and we will be able to reach to the students. So we will be able to uh, give them lessons. And uh, already it has been started. Uh, like uh, this uh, technology uh, webinar that the uh, academicians have been reaching to the uh, learners uh, through this uh, latest technology. Uh, they have been um, making aware of the, the students about the, uh, the challenges posed by uh, COVID-19. have been working hard uh, how to uh, reach to the students uh, crossing uh, that type of crisis and uh, avoiding uh, the normal uh, situation or normal way of uh, teaching learning process. So, uh, great initiative taken by the organizers. Personally, I congratulate uh, all the staff uh, who are associated with our college and the uh, persons who have willingly uh, given the consent to find out a solution or to find out a way of uh, a way so that we can uh, say something towards the uh, learners so new uh, pedagogies uh, will be invented for already started in our country that the whole syllabus should not be uh, taught in that uh, situation 30 percent syllabus should be cut and uh, uh, we have to give them lessons in a capsule form with the help of technology. But the thing is that uh, uh, we have to reach to the um, larger sections of the learners. Otherwise, uh, uh, would be uh, in a position to create a, a division among the students. So uh, personally, I believe that uh, the uh, resource persons, uh, the speakers uh, who will say something about this, they will think about uh, how to reach to the uh, learners uh, in a uh, better manner uh, so that uh, the larger sections of the students or the learners will be able to uh, get the benefits of uh, that type of thing. Uh, I'm very much impressed by the um, honorable uh, uh, Professor Onoda Shahai and uh, Sri, uh, Director of Higher Education, that uh, 
uh, everybody has been saying that the COVID is uh, making a crisis and uh, putting in front of us uh, different challenges. But uh, human beings uh, have the capacity to uh, make the challenges a, a opportunity as we have been using that type of technology. So uh, I personally believe and uh, probably all the academicians believe in the way somehow the uh, dust uh, will fall and uh, we'll be able to see the clear vision. But before that, uh, we will uh, find out the way in that uh, critical situation, how to reach to the uh, learners. Uh, the changes we have to bring uh, in the pedagogical field, in the academic field, uh, as an administrator or in a uh, competition. So I believe that uh, in this uh, international roadmap, uh, the experts, uh, the conditions, uh, and uh, the uh, participants who will try to find out uh, a way. And uh, we'll say something about uh, the uh, uh, challenges and also the solutions. And uh, this uh, international webinar, uh, organized by uh, Government Degree College, uh, uh, will uh, give a, a great uh, uh, Ray of hope uh, for in future. Uh, with these words, uh, once again, I congratulate. I may express my, my gratitude and uh, uh, respect to everybody, uh, the organizers, the participants, uh, and all other people uh, who have been uh, making this grand international webinar as a great success. Thanks to everybody. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, your lecture inspired us means uh, it was very impressive one and we, we will assure you that we will try to follow your expert comments and hope we'll join again and again, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. Now we are proceeding towards the technical session of day one. Uh, for that, you may ask questions by writing the uh, writing in the comment sections. We will assure you that the selected questions will be asked from the means uh, clarify from the uh, resource person at the end of their lecture. So stay tuned with us. Now we are going to start the first lecture of technical session nowadays due to the uh, covid-19 pandemic we are more inclined towards the uh, movement education the physical literacy all about the uh, sports sciences what you call sports sciences and i in my opinion he is the best person to explain all this because he is the best in the business he is none other than mr ashish kumar rawat he is currently working as a facilitator and head of physical education department in the heritage groups of schools in Delhi NCR. He has, he has observed various roles in his life, that of as a student, an athlete, a teacher, an event manager, and now as an administrator. Mr. Asis carries a global experience, especially in the field of physical education physical literacy, Olympic education, and Olympic event management. He got a scholarship by International Olympic Academy, Olympic Greece, to pursue MA, MA in uh, Olympic education and Olympic events management in 2011 and 2012. He was also got a scholarship by government of Japan to pursue short-term course Olympic Games legacy program in 2014. He was awarded with Sports India Award in 2018 for spreading Olympic spirit in India. Apart from his current role, he is an active member of International Physical Literacy Association, United Kingdom, where his role deals with advocacy, education, and training. His work in physical literacy and Olympic education gives him an additional experience to design and develop new pedagogical approaches in general and specifically to this pandemic. So I welcome you, sir. 
for your avoided lecture we which will definitely enrich us with many ways so please i welcome you sir you can proceed with your lecture sir thank you ankan sir for that elaborative uh, introduction i highly appreciate uh, for your uh, timing and uh, for those kind words and i uh, would like to thank uh, the degree college dharmanagar for giving me this opportunity to speak on um, something where uh, where doctors and everybody is speaking but uh, I, i i see during this pandemic this is very important uh, that we uh, just apart from looking at the uh, the biological point of view or from the medical point of view it is very important of what we can do to ourselves to immune ourselves and that is the new pedagogical approach that we need to take up so i will be today i'll be majorly speaking uh, from uh, a point of view where a teacher could understand it better and uh, it will make sense to all of you too but let me start with my presentation before we go Ankan sir, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Perfectly okay. Right. So, uh, so this basically that we wanted to, uh, I want to to pursue. It. I am a physical education. I was a physical education student. I was uh, a player, a student who was playing a lot, and uh, then we became a physical education uh, teacher, studying in one of the best institutes across the country. Uh, where Ms. Rankin was my uh, batchmate, and apart from that, going forward into the system, that I what I understood is this is entirely a different ball game of what we see, what we see and what we experience, what we have been taught is extremely different from what we going to be doing in our classes, and what we see as uh, especially as physical education teachers and administrator that there is a lot more. that needs to be provided to the kids which we say the grassroots of the country this grassroots tomorrow will be leading to the tomorrow citizen whether they become a sportsman whether they become uh, a doctor whether they become an engineer it is very important for each one of them to understand that this is important right so uh, today i'll be speaking majorly on uh, physical literacy a window to the new horizon uh, the term looks different but it is very much uh, inevitable or in everybody's life and uh, we talk about physical literacy sometimes unknowingly we are pursuing it too uh, and that's how i have managed it like in the last 3 to 4 years i've able to uh, elaborate and explore physical literacy from a different perspective so i would like to take you to a flashback a historical flashback which you will go back to the days where you might think in that okay these were the gone days and here it is what do you see in this picture people enjoying jumping into the ponds the play fields open everybody dancing around this was the pre covid scenario right and where everybody was physically active but they were physically active we see a lot of physical things which are happening here and what happened when the lockdown was introduced what happened we were thinking that it will go for like about 10 days 15 days and everything like any other issue or pandemic it will go away but more than physical activity it it landed into a situation where people were feeling lonely they were feeling distressed they were feeling lazy they were experimenting a lot of food and which might added a lot of kgs to their body there was no physical activity there was crying and howling happening and we have heard a lot of suicides these days right so this this complete three and a half three four, four months have left us with nothing but maybe sitting alone to the corner and thinking of what could be done or oh, this is the worst part or what do i say as the 2020 should be eliminated from the uh, uh the calendar and we should look into a different perspective but none of us have thought about that it has elevated the graph of learning that we were doing it has completely changed the perspective it has looked into the new normal that we so called 
and the, the virtual age as seems to be very possible. I've seen people who were not very comfortable with uh, walking with the, their laptops and computers, getting connected, showing themselves on the screens and all, and they landed into a different scenario. And we started with the classes, uh, the kids were at home, uh, and we started uh, doing a lot of fitness classes. Really. So everybody was on their screens and trying to do their best as much as we can. And this was the new normal. People were not able to go out. People were not able to take time, but they made sure few of us that we do things like this. So this is small. Uh, Actually, that I'm showing that people were doing. So, I would say that it is an endless road to a boundless opportunities. Why do I say it? When I say that it is an endless road to a boundless opportunities, it is not that me as an individual or somebody who is related to sports or somebody else can only be a part of this physically literate world. No, it physically literate world is not just physical in nature. It talks more about motivation, confidence, physical competence, the knowledge, the understanding, the value, and the take responsibility for engagement for physical activities for life. And this stands equally important in our lives. When we were not able to go out, when um, people uh, were finding out ways to teach effectively on their screen, and uh, the teaching is not as effective as it was into the live classes. When you we were face to face, there was a physical connect. I do not disagree to it. But what I want to say is what happens if this is the new normal and this continues for, for NY reason, I really hope that this goes away. But uh, what happens if we continue it normal? What needs to change if it, we come back from, we come back from this pandemic and then we look the world in a different way. Do we start go back, start going back to what we were doing, or we change our methodologies and strategies to come up and to empower the students, which are the future of tomorrow? So it is very important to look at those perspectives. So what do we say? Like uh, when a child is about to born, the nine months uh, in the mother's womb, he make a lot of movements and uh, I will be a new father, so I I experience that womb kicks. And it makes me uh, tickle a lot. And so it's, it's, it's a different experience. So the movement itself starts when a child is in the womb and till he is into his grave. So this complete process, anything which is physical in nature gets into it. And if you see into, into the historical backgrounds, we, we used to run, or we used to throw the javelin or to eat, right? And we have, need to have different perspectives all. So this is somewhere where we call about like the disposition. Right, so the disposition in the attitude. So this disposition keeps changing. When I was small, my disposition, my attitude was different. When I got younger and become an adult, my disposition and the attitude was different. And that keeps changing with every time, every five years, two years, my disposition keeps changing. I talk to people, my disposition keeps changing. My perspectives keeps changing. And that's when my ideologies remaining to physical literacy also change. My disposition, when I say it, differs from individual to individual. Somebody who is enjoying a dance, maybe it has own disposition of enjoying it, right? Somebody who is not physically abled and needs have a, have a special help to it, they have their own journey to look at. They have their own perspective to complete, but they are still perspective. So they people have different. What we are trying to show here is people need to be effective physically literate in the way they can. And it, it needs to be understood from their point of view. It cannot be just a physical thing. Every individual is unique. You, me, and each one of us are different, different from each other. And the differences come from the past experiences that we have. Each one of us behave in a unique way in a physical activity. Right. So uh, to give you an example, like if you throw a 50 students into a class and they might pick up different sports to pick up, 
somebody might just need dance or somebody will go to hockey or any other game so they have their own past experiences somebody might want to just sit and do some uh, acrobats which is fine with it so it is has their everybody has their own set of experiences that we gain over the years that they have spent in their life and it all depends on the environment that we have so we need to look at the environment influencing our engagement in physical activity so we majorly say or we say physical literacy could be looked up not only physical in nature but has to be looked at from motivation point of view from confidence point of view from physical competence point of view and from knowledge and understanding point of view so the the red portions that you see are the absence of that particular region and on the right complete right that you see is the outcome of those particular things that we say what are what are the psychological outcomes of it so if somebody is like motivated or being confident he's physically competent and he has that knowledge and understanding of the competence of the physical work that he is doing he will be engaged and happy somebody doesn't have a motivation but working on has the confidence has the physical competence has the medical ability will be more into an apathy content the next one he has the motivation doesn't have the confidence to do it competence physical competence is there knowledge and understanding is there he might be anxious because he is not confident enough to pursue that particular activity next week if you look at somebody who is not having a physical competence he might get frustration what is frustration when your expectation does not meet your reality i want to jump to a certain height i want to lift a certain weight so what what will happen in that case it will lead to frustration when i am not able to achieve or what i wanted to achieve that will lead to a lot of frustration to me and lastly but not the least if i do not have the knowledge and understanding to that particular thing whatever i will be if i i am not sure of what i want to do how i want to do what i will be i will be in a state of confusion which is not a good thing so all these things i'm not saying that it will come in in one day but if you see that these things need to be there one by one and all these things stands equally important now as i said that uh, the the disposition of the attitude that we will change disposition as an influencer or the attitude as an influencer if i have a good past experience if i was engaged into an activity you will see those happy faces and you will have those positive experiences in your life if your experience in the life are not happy or they are negative in nature it will you will continue to that what happens to just to give you an example if somebody is experiencing for an example uh is been taught in a way that he never was able to achieve because my ability was always i was really bad at football to be true uh i was really bad at football i was not able to give a loft kick loft is where you kick the ball down below and then it lofts up uh so i was not very good with it what happened is that i am not very interested in playing football but i would rather be very happy playing the other games although i know northeast has a big fan following to football so excuse me for that but uh, i would say that uh, it is just the past experiences that we have right so anybody who is engaged who is explored having happy experiences in their past will lead to a brighter life the experience mean not to have that everybody will become a pele tomorrow or a messi tomorrow but it is that i am confident enough in doing that i am motivating to do that i have that knowledge and understanding for doing all those stuff that's what as an attitude deals with it and it becomes an influencer in our life to pursue our life in a better way now what do i see every individual is different so uh, if i talk it from uh, how, how do i say it? if i talk it from uh, a layman's point of view think of a child who has come to your class for an example a 40 kids say in english uh, let's take an example of uh, football again out of 30 kids that there are there in your class what will happen there will be around 10 people who will be really or five people who will be like really pro at it who will really be good at football there will be like 10 students 10 15 students who will be like kind of average 
good with acquisition but not having the knowledge and understanding and few of them is just as beginner but what we do what we do is we pick up a certain skill or certain teaching and that's what happens in uh, the normal classes also we pick up a topic and then we teach try to teach it every and then we talk about that it is student centric no the approach needs to be changed right what do i need to do so if i ask you what is 2 plus 2 you will instantly come up with an answer saying that it is 4 if i ask you what is 2 minus 2 you will instantly come with an answer and will speak but what do i say say if i say what is the square root of 10486 then you might take time or few of you like me are really bad at math so i might not be able to calculate the square root of it right so i was i, I will take time what will happen in this process when i'm taking this time either what will happen is i will lose the interest and then i will say that i don't like maths and i don't want to it. or secondly on the other hand what do i need to do if i say 2 plus 2 and i keep saying that this is 2 plus 2 today we will just do plus with small figures or a single figures 2 plus 2 2 plus 3 2 plus 4 what do i do it becomes very easy for me so it will be easier i will lose the interest very quickly whether it is very tough i will lose the interest very easily so both the extremes are not good. so each and every individual who is not able to do 2 plus 2 for him or her the 2 plus 2 is the right challenge for somebody who is able to do a square root of 2000 for them a square root of 2000 it is a good challenge for somebody who is challenge in it's a greater degree of challenge so the degree of difficulty that we talk about needs to be differentiated right it has to be realistic it has to be achievable how good is realistic realistic not to you not to you as a teacher but realistic to the kids to the students who are doing it to the students whom you are trying to teach and sometimes we say that okay this particular student is not doing good is getting less marks have we try to find out the cause root behind it the cause root behind it is just not that he don't won't want to study or he is just interested in um, playing or he is just interested in something other but it might be that there might be a different way of teaching it to so we need to explore that that's how the goals goes individualistic individualistic and realistic in nature and achievable somebody who can dribble with one leg with dribbles with one leg somebody who wants to dribble with cross legs cross legs but you cannot go to a class and then say okay everybody now okay start juggling i am not able to juggle what do i do i will stand on a corner with a ball and then just be with it so that the teacher doesn't shout at me that's what we don't want to do we want to give everybody a wholesome experience that they progress and how do we do that i have just told you right there are many ways to doing it but so it needs to be realistic and achievable the second thing is it needs to be challenged rightly as i said if i don't get challenged in the previous conversation that we were of this doing if i am not rightly challenged what i'll do as lose my interest right if i'm losing my interest i will not progress so what do i need to do i need to progress right kind of challenge and i need to have right solution so if you see on the left side on the right side of the picture you will see a person a child uh, who's been on a tricycle with with, with the quads and then he is able to because he will not fall right in the second one the progression which is happening is the father is standing behind and he is able to ride the cycle although the supports are there but it has to be different and now the second one that i want to say you only see for an example what do you see in this bicycle ride you only see that uh, this bicycle ride is very physical in nature you need to cycle your legs hold the handle have something on your head and then just ride no it is more than just physical so we have three parameters to it physical affective and cognitive when we talk about physical it talks about physical competence whether i am able to do that or not do i have strength in my legs in my hands to do it or not or to have 
what kind of bike that I want to share. So if I'm having a big bike, I might not be able to handle it properly. But if I'm having a small bike to my age and I can do it. Second is effective. Am I motivated to do it? Am I motivated to do it in terms of say, I want to do it. I want to ride a bicycle and I just don't want to sit around. So that is very effective, very motivated to do that. Right. The next one is cognitive knowledge and training. Okay. What do I know about the bicycle? I need to, when I bicycle, when I cycle it, push it forward, the bicycle moves forward. Right. And understanding is I need to keep the handle straight. If I can keep the handle on the right on the left, it'll go towards the left. When I keep the handle towards the right, it will go towards the right. So this kind of knowledge and understanding goes hand in hand. Just bicycling, bicycling onto a spot will not let the bicycle ride. You need to know the physical, affective and cognitive side of it. It needs to be actually supported. Who is supporting it? The father is supporting it. And you as a teacher got to support them. Okay, you are going this way. Why don't you try this way? If you try this way, how? what do you experience? What, what do we do as teachers normally is uh, we give them a certain context saying that, okay, this is what you are supposed to be doing and do this and you will fall right into the Indian system that we say. I'm sorry if I'm uh, bothering somebody on that. And uh, questions, if I ask a question, if a child asks a question, we might ask like, you don't answer or a few of the good teachers who are appreciating the way it is being an answer, you will give an answer. No, that's not what we're going to be doing. We need to do is do the cognitive coaching. Let the child help the child to arrive a solution on its own. I need not to Hello, can you hear me, sir? Ashish, sir? So, due to poor connectivity, he will join again. Just wait for a while. He's joining. I think he is trying to join. Meanwhile, uh, I would like to request all the participants to ask questions related to his uh, lecture. It will be better to reply. And uh, you can ask uh, whatever we have asked. I will ask to him. But try to be on topic. Means related to the topic. Try to ask the questions. Thank you. I'll ask uh, Posanji sir to uh, call him if possible so that he can join. Meanwhile, after this lecture, We'll have one more lecture on day one that will be given by Dr. Sanjay Kumar sir from South Korea. Later on, let's try Asis sir first to join.
हेलो हेलो प्रसन्नजीत सर इज वेट सर आ ये सर आई एम ट्राइंग टू कांटेक्ट हिम बट प्लीज वेट सर should we go for the next uh, lecture or we should wait for few more minutes give me one minute sir hmm okay Uh, stay tuned, all the participants. Uh, we will start. Uh, we are trying to contact our Rawat sir. What try, bro? Yeah. As he is not able to see the uh, screen, he is thinking that he is taking okay means. What's up, Mr. Tiger? तुम से कॉल कॉल करो 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 हेलो 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 अरे कट गया बहुत पहले से फिर से ज्वाइन करो पांच पांच मिनट हो गया पांच चार पांच मिनट हाँ ओके ही इज कमिंग ही इज कमिंग i know that uh, yeah. he is thinking that as he is not able to see uh, the screen he is thinking that yeah, he is yeah, yeah. Uh, going uh, okay means now he is joining yeah no problem sir he will join soon so meanwhile uh, after that we are having one more lecture by dr sanjay kumar uh, let's wait for few minutes and he will join again meanwhile i want to introduce i want to introduce dr sanjay kumar he is currently a research professor at gangwon university gangwon research institute of korean studies Republic of Korea. He is living in South Korea from last eleven years and pursued his masters and PhD from Gangwon National University. He also represents Seoul City Foreign Resident Council, Seoul Metropolitan Government. So, before welcoming him, we will wait for two more minutes for previous lecture. and i will request to all the participants please stay tuned and uh, you will have to or you may ask some questions uh, but uh, if the question will uh, means related to your the lecture then it will be good so try to ask the question 
related to the presentation or lecture i know during this uh, pandemic it is very difficult to uh, go out but this is the only way uh, this is the only way to contact with with each other and but at the same time there is some problems due to the bad weather in throughout india now he has joined i think yeah uh i am extremely sorry uh there was some internet connection i could not see uh that i have missed on mm -hmm. okay uh, ankan sir can you hear me now yes yes it is okay yes, and uh, go for the uh, share screen sir then you can continue from the same slide right sir my apologies okay sir no problem sir. it is a part of, part of uh, no problem sir it is the part of the webinar it can happen to yeah. anyone Yes. No sir. problem, sir. You can continue, sir. No problem. Yes. Ankan, sir, can you tell me where where the text? Uh, if you can see my screen now. Yes, sir. I can see. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can go uh, go on. Then carry on. Means from uh, means. Uh, okay. Next, next, go next. i will stop you go next next okay ha ha from here you can carry on okay oh, right uh i am extremely sorry and i begin it again um uh, okay uh excuse me sorry guys uh so you are talking about the appreciation so appreciation is something that we need to provide to that particular child it needs to be appreciated of the things got well they cannot be an achiever on all the classes everybody cannot score 100 marks but they can they will be people who are scoring 50 marks they will be appreciate they need to be appreciated for getting those 50 marks they cannot be there cannot be a place where everybody in the class will secure 100 marks so we need to appreciate with the little efforts that everybody is doing and motivate them to do better it is about also charting individual progress it is like all the individuals that we are talking about we are appreciating them we are doing but the growth and the achievement will happen when you are charting that individual progress and that's how you will be able to plan your plan sessions next so it is very important to uh, chart your progress usually and as i said if we get all these things that right we talk about we will have individuals who will be physically active uh we will have confident in physical activities they will be move they will be moving efficiently and effectively they will know how to improve the performance they will work independently with others they will be aware of the impact of well being they will be aware of the movement needs and possibility and health self confidence so it majors a physical activity will no more be looked at will will have a motivation will have a confidence will have physical competence and will have knowledge and understanding and to sum up to this in this complete process the individual should be heart of the physical literacy and therefore the heart of the pedagogy promoting motivation through establishing a positive learning environment needs to be confident task mastery we talk about performance and situated goals develop enhance and maintain physical confidence in that particular dj physical competence they will be knowing about developing knowledge and understanding devolving responsibility using feedback and charting progress as motivational tool so these all these things need to come up together next is physical activity no more just physical so it has to be uh, the activity needs to be more than physical as i said activity you are looking physical activity just as physical activity we are walking we are jumping hopping but we were not able to do effective and cognitive so now if we see if i chart it rightly physical is about physical competence and health and fitness effective is having personal and social streams cognitive is about being creative and having knowledge and understanding so i'm saying it again physical can be looked at into two parameters called health and fitness and physical competence effective can be looked at self which is personal and social how do i behave with others cognitive can be creativity of that individual and the knowledge and understanding of that particular concept so this will physical activity will no more be just a physical activity 
now for so looking at this uh, we talk about a uh, uh, physical literacy uh, philosophy so this physical literacy philosophy have a holistic trilogy we need to talk about three things range of opportunities so we need to have a multiple range of opportunities for the people second one is engaging individuals in physical activity and charting a journey right so these three things are very important to be seen first range of opportunities what do i talk about range of opportunity that i need to provide so i need to provide so for an example uh, what happens is um, in a certain school uh, we will have a certain game and everybody a certain teacher for an example uh, uh, i am a teacher of uh, football and i will be really into just football football so the kids will develop a skill related to football they will not be able to develop all the other skills but we need to have a range of movements maybe gymnastic maybe something else which provide range of movements to them sufficient allocated time there has to be a perfect time the the cbse and the other norms have uh, suggested that there has to be somewhere around uh, one uh, for 30 to 45 minutes every day i'm i'm pretty sure that might not be the case with every school but whatever best that we could do should have sufficient allocated time with them right the next one is uh, ankan sir can you hear me ankan sir yeah yes sir i can hear you sir perfectly okay you can carry on sir okay sorry uh, so the range of activities that we are talking about is the breadth and depth of it so breadth and depth of it in terms of what do i know how deep that activity needs to be understand and how broadly it needs to be taken so what what do i need to do what do i need to do when i teach a, a child football what do i need to do is see them whether they are able to play football the end result is that they should play football good so i need to look at it a holistic point of view how they are collaborating with others how they are top, how they are doing skillful are they physically competent are they motivated to do it all these things need to be taken so breadth and depth of that activity needs to be taken care cultural rele relevant activities we as indian society have a lot of cultural relevant, relevant activities we talk about kho kho kabaddi and even games which are very local in nature that needs to be included into your curriculum so that they understand it better of how they are they connected major so they will be able to connect it and then the activity should be safe and relevant how these activities should be safe and relevant it talks about relevant in terms of what i need to develop so the authenticity of it i want to develop this and i'm able to develop this and safe in terms of the environment right they should not get hurt into that process otherwise they will they might lose the opportunity of doing that next one is the pedagogical approach now this stands very important so that's the topic uh, of the uh, the the webinar that we are doing the pedagogical approaches we need to have different pedagogical approaches we cannot go with one pedagogical approach i will be talking about teaching styles in the next uh, slide but it is majorly about that uh, engaging individuals should have group activities should have creative and initi initiative learning they should have include every individual inclusion should be there they should be challenging at all levels it should develop responsibility so these are the important things and before doing that it is about a diagnostic so any doctor that you go in and you say that you are feeling feverish what do they te they tell you they tell you to go and have a blood test right that's how they know what is the problem might be happening so the diagnosis states are very important and that's how they analyze it and we as teacher need to diagnose it too and we need to diagnose it too not only from physical perspective we only need not to see that this boy is physically very strong and he can run and then he can do it so we need not to do it we need to see it from physical point of view from affective point of view and from cognitive point of view i'm sorry i'll keep saying that because um i was a born i, I was playing at a national level and then the institute that i went to is one of the best institutes where the international players were there everybody each one of us was just talking about physical we were not talking about affective and cognitive we were never trained into it the psychologists were never there we were never trained into that how do i strong myself because i have had those techniques but i was not able to come up with the the personal and social skill that i wanted to have at that point of time which are very important now is what happens majorly is you tell a child and then uh, we sometimes miss out 
So we give them a challenge and we don't provide them the initial support or the support throughout the phase. So this challenge plus support can only lead to a good learning, right? So it cannot be a position where you see that a normal curve, basically what happens is initially when you start, you are in a comfort zone where you go reach above, you are in a stress zone and when you go down into a panic situation. So I will ask you in that particular question that where do you feel that it will be good to be into that position? Whether you want to be in a comfortable position, whether you want to be in a stressed position or you want to be in a panic position to have the learning to take place. So the research suggests that the child and that the, when I talk about child, I'm not talking about a class, I'm talking about that particular individual. This child needs to be stressed. It has to be in a process of stretch all the time so that he keeps pushing himself and he keeps motivating. So that's one thing which is very important. What happens into the classes you might be knowing, which one is like you? You uh, spend your time making them line up and asking them what needs to be done, what need not to be done, or rather initially the child comes and that, that get engaged initially. We're not talking about warm up, we're talking about the initial engagement, right? So that initial engagement is very important. Otherwise, out of the 30, 35 minutes of class, 10 minutes I will come into, come into a line and walk like this and love that. So that will look good to eyes. But what looks good to mind and heart will be somebody when they are enjoying, smiling, playing and all around. It has to be organized. It, it will not be a mess, but it has to be organized. Now we talk about different teaching strategies. So what we usually do is we command something and we practice something. So we say that that need to be retail that child. Okay, this needs to be done and the child practice that and then it's over. But from command and pro uh, practice, we need to move to range of activities to create a positive learning environment. And these are the different teaching styles, these different models that need to be incorporated. We need to have a divergent discovery. When we talk about divergent discovery, it is divergent maybe. I want to teach one thing, but I will not teach that particular thing in a straight way. What I'll do is I'll take support of something else to teach that concept. Guided discovery, I'm always there to help you learn a design. I open the child, I say, okay, you will be playing a three on three football, but what you need to do is there will not be no goal. What you need to do is you need to do dribble. So this is learn a design. So you give them a few basic rules and you tell them that you develop your own skills. Reciprocal, when, when they talk among itself, Inclusion, when we include everyone, we don't say that this is a strong team, this is a weak team. We include everyone. We do a self-check, whether I'm doing fine or not, I check. So sports education, cooperative learning, teaching games for understanding, all these teaching models should come into effect based on what is the activity and what is the level of that particular child. Everything may not fall in place. So this is the Moston spectrum of teaching styles. This Moston spectrum is not only used in physical education or physical literacy, this is basically used all over in normal education. So we, the purpose or the spectrum purpose is, is that, that from teacher oriented, this becomes to a people oriented. So the people should be one who should be learning. It should not be teacher who will be directing this, that, and from reproduction to production and dependent learning become independent learning. So these, this is the term that we need to show. How the activity should be? The activity should be purposeful. It should be engaged, it should be relevant, and it should be rewarding. It has to be purposeful, it has to be engaged, it has to be relevant, and it has to be rewarding. So with, with that, I would say that uh, it was uh, about the physical literacy journey that we want to talk about. It has a lot more. We can, I would like to just say one thing on the way. We cannot nurture the, the teaching system based on competition and numbers. We cannot teach, we cannot, this is a saying that I'm reading it out for, this is not mine. We cannot nurture a teaching system based on competition, control and outcomes. And then to expect to be able to teach students effectively about collaboration, autonomy and process. So until and unless we do it, we will not be able to change this. With that, uh, I would like to thank, uh, if you have any questions, uh, Angan sir, if we have any questions, um, I will be happy to take them. Yeah, yes, sir. We are having questions. Uh, sir, before that, uh, please, sir, uh, 
can you stop the sharing okay now it's okay so thank you sir thank you. for thank such you. a wonderful refreshing uh, presentation very unique one there are few questions sir for uh, you that from uh, priyojit debnath he is asking that how movement education influence uh, child's attitude as well as their daily life so uh, okay. uh, yes sir yes sir can how I, can movement I uh, how movement education influence child attitude as well as their daily life how through physical right. so, literacy or movement education you can change the life of uh, children right so we need to know that there is a big difference in uh, physical literacy and uh, movement education movement education just talks about the physical movement that we are doing physical literacy will talk about the holistic view of it right which will talk about as i told you uh, zillion times physical effective and cognitive so when we talk about movement education movement education is just not alone movement education when a child is walking he will be knowing that where i am walking when i run where i am jumping so it will become consciously emotionally conscious of what i am able to do from where i am able to jump this will lead to a better refreshment so he will be exploring a lot of things in doing and that's how the person will be able to be more influenced in the coming times mm, right 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 sir absolutely correct sir and uh, uh, one more question from saurabh debnath saurabh chakraborty and few are asking almost the same question which may not be related to your means or indirectly related to your uh, topic but still if you want to reply them then welcome sir please, please. what i will try to uh, uh, what we do to overcome such mental stress and health issues uh, during this lockdown means all are asking the same question in different ways but the main theme is how to overcome the mental stress or emotional stress or health issues during this lockdown so this is the See, question uh, so what do i say i will i will quote my journey towards it so on um, a march 18th the lockdown was announced right and what i did was for for me being as a teacher or an administrator it was very different term called when uh, we were asked to do a uh, work from home so it was very different for our mass and we were, we suddenly became happy so that we will be working like a corporate people at home right so uh, we got into that space saying that okay this will be really nice and believe me after 5 days we we were in a constraint of what i need to do and i was like simply in terms of like a person who drives up about like 120 kilometers every day and do a lot of activities keep jumping around here and there and for them to sit at one place it was very distressing so what i did first was like i got in uh, myself a schedule of where i will be getting up where i will be uh, doing my work when i will be uh, giving some time to my body or and some time to my mind so for example when i talked about uh, my work it started at 8 or come and 2:30 4 o'clock it used to get over and then i used to have a, a a small nap and then i used to go for a activity and then in the evening time i made sure that i sit with my family and then i talk about what things are going on right so we i tried cooking i talked about cleaning the house and all i do i did a lot of workout so it is getting yourself engaged something worthy that you are interested into so that will be really helpful for you so if you just keep thinking of what will be happening i am distressed it will lead to a bad habit what you need to do is you need to get up from your chair and need to do the little that you want to do or which makes you happy whatever it may be okay so thank you sir we are very much satisfied with your answer sir and uh, reply and uh, you have given us a some kind of orientation uh, about the physical literacy and it is very relevant to uh, our society to to identify the children uh, of their uh, means uh, towards uh, their profession how to uh, identify them and you have focused on the challenges and the opportunity in physical liter literacy which will help many of us in the future life sir so thank you sir for your uh, wonderful presentation and accepting our request sir so thanks thank once again sir, sir. Uh, i'm going to i will close it by saying it uh, 
this presentation might be looked at as a, a especially for maybe a teacher who is physically uh, driven or not but believe me it is for everyone each child yes, 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 all of yes, you yes. who are working at home might not be physically education teachers or sports teachers might be doctors get yourself engaged into some kind of physical activity because you are the backbone you are the people who are saving our lives so it is very important for you also to be physically active and help us the best way you can and that's what we suggest thank you so much for inviting me and it was a pleasure uh, to be on this platform sharing my views thank you so much thank you sir i welcome your suggestion sir thank you sir so without any delay we will proceed towards the next lecture which will be given by none other none other than dr sanjay kumar he is currently a research professor at gangwon research institute of korean studies republic of korea he is living in south korea from last 11 years and pursued his masters and phd from gangwon national university he also represents seoul city foreign residents council seoul metropolitan government so i welcome you sir and uh, please we are very eager to uh, watch you or hear you through your presentation sir so welcome thank you, you very much thank you very much for this uh, invitation uh, so all of you can you hear me now yes, can sir. you hear me okay yes, and okay, perfect. Uh, for sharing the uh, presentation i think we need to check uh, once more because yes, you know sir. because of this uh, you know it is a digital communication so we may encounter as we encountered mm -hmm. before so yes. let me check first is it uh, so my screen is shared already or i have to share no you have to share sir okay so okay. so better to open ppt first sir then ess yeah, it it is opened so ppt is here yes sir, yes so sir. Is, is it visible now no uh, no sir not now uh... okay so after you Okay. You have great. to open it through window application, sir. Yes, it was opened through Windows application. Is it visible? Not now, sir. Uh... Okay, let me try once again. Ha! Huh, yes, sir. Close it and then again. application window and uh, the so ppt is, we, yeah is it visible now the uh, uh, ppt is not there we can see you sir uh yes but uh, i am sharing you know in the the message also says stream hard stream yard.com is sharing a window ah uh, sir mm -hmm. without minimizing the ppt you have to come again to the uh, stream yard okay don't minimize mm -hmm. ppt just open it and be there and come to the this tab uh, okay live stream so uh, close it again sir stop sharing again then you have to okay so now the screen is being stopped yes sir so uh, without minimizing the ppt come again uh, for share screen without minimize go for share screen then application window 
yes then application window yeah is you it... can see here the ppt yeah now ppt is visible yes 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 sir yes sir now okay. go for slideshow it's okay okay Perfect. yeah okay. so yeah so now we are going to uh, start the webinar uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me and i was listening to uh, the other speaker just uh, before uh, like my presentation and it was uh, really fruitful uh, although it was not uh, you know centered for the uh, uh, presenters but uh, i can see that there are many challenges uh, in, in in the indian uh, academia these days and students are also struggling to like attend classes attend exams and those things so my presentation would be uh, not focused on the education part but uh, it is a kind of a sharing experience of what south korea is doing to prevent uh, this covid-19 uh, not only confirmed cases but uh, to contain and to protect its economy in in the upcoming uh, years so as the topic says south korea's preventive measures to covid-19 so in order to get inside in the, in, in the presentations uh, le let me first show the current status of uh, covid-19 in india you all of you might be very uh, curious to know uh, as this is the data that uh, we have been uh, re uh, receiving from the kcdc the of the officially uh, recognized uh, research institute is there it is called korea center for uh, prevention of diseases so they have uh, been updating this uh, data every day and each and every day they share with the uh, media also and the uh, social and government organizations in korea so as of now uh, is it uh, audible to all hello hello yes sir it is audible but sir okay. you have to uh, go for slide show it is coming but uh, a bit uh, smaller okay. but you have to slide. go for a slide show okay like this uh, yes sir yes is it okay? No, okay okay yes sir yeah so as of uh, july 23rd like yesterday this data uh, i got yesterday so after 6 six o'clock like 6 pm in korea they share this data uh, to public and uh, the government and uh, and also the uh, media so yesterday koreans uh, with confirmed cases were 13938 so this is the total number and uh, they were quarantined also and uh, some of them were kept in different wards uh, isolated and deceased are 298 persons like two, it is two, 297 but this morning uh, one more case case came and the total number is 298 as of uh, today's morning so if we compare the death rate uh, you know it is around 2.2 percent and 2.2 percent uh, if we compare from other developing countries or even uh, developed countries like america we can see a kind of a deterrent from korean side so there might be uh, some uh, strategies that korea followed we are going to look inside those strategies what korea did how korea did and what we can like we as an indian uh, what we can learn from uh, the korean uh, story although you know the the vaccine is still not out korea is also working but uh, they are they have not been successful till now and uh, they are very much dependent on the us side so uh, till the vaccine comes korea is also uh, going to be in in in, uh, in the era of uncertainties but uh, even in between the uncertainties uh, koreans have come up with uh, many strategies uh, related to like digital uh, communication as well as uh, some digital form of uh, uh, you know tracing the patients so in this presentation we are going to uh, uh, you know uh, like know about those strategies what they did and how they are doing so first of all 
it should be noted that they have like they means korea the south korea they have a health system not not from uh, like uh, not after this covid 19 uh, situation but before also they had developed some health system focused on pandemic issues to prevent from communicable communicable and other uh, diseases because in 2011 they came up with this and after that they tackled uh, you know mers mers was also a uh, very uh, dangerous in korea in two, uh, a few years back so uh, they have some kind of experience of dealing with this kind of uh, diseases and uh, observing those uh, problems of uh, pre uh, of disease they established uh, uh, a center called uh, korea center for uh, prevent uh, prevention of diseases and uh, this comes under the health ministry and uh, the pre president of korea the, he also directly looks after it but they have a designated uh, prime minister who looks after that uh, i will be discussing after a after a while uh, in this presentation so when we talk about the health system in korea actually south korea divided in uh, 1945 in two blocks although the officially north korea and south korea they uh, they became in existence later but before the separation before the partition they were under the colony of japan for from 1910 to 1945 so after korea got independence like we got independent from british in 1947 so in, for, in 1945 itself, South Korea was very much concerned about the communicable disease. And uh, that time they uh, established one laboratory, which was known as like quarantine laboratory. Most of us have come across this quarantine word very recently. But let me clarify you that in Korea, uh, they are very much familiar from the, from the uh, past years too. Uh, they call it like Chaga Khyomni. So in China, they uh, they also call it in the same way. Like in uh, China, uh, they use the these days they are using using simplified form of Chinese. But earlier they used uh, the classical Chinese, and Korea was using a Chinese classical form for a long period. So that is why this word quarantine, which which we can say like very much uh, used in uh, uh, in uh, China because the virus originated in Wuhan. So this, uh, there is a lingual connection also. So uh, because Korea still is very much uh, influenced by China in many cases, especially uh, linguistically. So this quarantine word is not very uncommon to the, to the scholars of uh, Korea and Korean studies, especially the, the, the historians and the, and the Eastern medicine people. So quarantine is a like very common word. Uh, I just want to let the, uh, the students here know about this word and uh, its uh, uh, connectivity towards the uh, China and uh, uh, Japanese language. So when they became sovereign, that time itself they established one uh, quarantine laboratory where people with communicable disease could be kept. And US also helped that time. And the major focus was to conduct national infection disease research and control because they wanted to uh, come up with some kind of uh, bioscience research in order to improve the public health and quality of life. So because of the geopolitical situation, we can say that we did not have that kind of legacy, but Korea had because it uh, they, there were so many players like Ch uh, China was also interested, but uh, Japan was also at the same time interested us was also interested in 1945 uh, uh, let's not go into the geopolitical things uh, but yeah geopolitical uh, approach was there in establishing this uh, quarantine laboratory in 1945 but that legacy has been maintained by the new governments that came in uh, korea from 19 uh, like 53 uh, 49 then uh, 1960s 70s and current government is also following the legacy and they are very much focused on on the public health because the population is very less in korea like compared to uh, our country 
so their the the their concern towards the human life is uh, very precious and uh, because of that they are very much interested in building infrastructures and infrastructure not in the forms of building only but also building institutions so they have built institutions across korea across provinces across the local government jurisdictions and that helped them in this pandemic situation a lot people are talking about like south korea has become a model and they have uh, solved the issue very effectively but when we go inside we find that infrastructure was the answer they already had those institutions and uh, infrastructure to deal with this covid 19 which is not the same case with our countries especially the developing and the uh, and the nations in africa we are lacking in uh, those facilities so let me start with this establishment of kcdc why this kcdc is important why i am bringing this here is because kcdc you will be uh, surprised to know that kcdc is the major organization who dealt with all the cases including suspects confirmed cases and the vaccine kind of things they are the only one only single organization who is responsible for this covid 19 although they are being supported by the other government agencies but they are the most responsible uh, institution so existence of this kind of institution and following the responsibilities it is really effective in countries with less population because people are directly communicating people can get information directly the kcdc was also interested in sharing all the uh, information like single single for, uh, single case of covid 19 which was not common has also been reported in the public and media so the data were compiled and shared each and every day so if you go to the website of kcdc you can find how minutely they were monitoring the data they and not only monitoring but they were sharing also and it was shared to public along with the instructions and guidelines if we compare developing countries although uh, obviously it will not be honest because uh, the the korea is very much digitally connected and people here are are like they access korean language easily and information is being uh, officially disseminated through a language form but other developing countries can learn from it uh, especially when it comes to the digital infrastructure as well as the uh, real infrastructure so these two infrastructure uh, point of view can be taken into uh, consideration uh, while commenting uh about learning from korea or like considering it as a as a like model so what this uh, kcdc came up with so in 2011 when they came up they came up with the objectives of five star they wanted to become five star kind of um, it is called like osung osung is like in korean it is uh, considered a kind of um, a high class thing so they wanted to achieve this five star objectives till 2020 so it it is not a new case it is not a new story that kcdc uh, has been established in order to covid 19 because covid 19 has become a global pandem pandemic korea was focused on tackling with this kind of uh, pandemic uh, situation although they were not Uh, very much prepared because they were not anticipating it to be on this much on this level but they were prepared for like uh, a small communicable disease, communicable diseases where the spread is not global like mers and sars so their objective was security number one objective was security it means they wanted to strengthen the emergency response capabilities number 2 was synergy they wanted to integrate research from interdisciplinary perspective 
Number three was safety. Of uh, although it's a democracy, but uh, safety concerns are seen as a as not only a democratic thing, but also a social and uh, uh, government responsibility in Korea. And when it comes to safety, uh, you know, all the political parties, despite of differences, they come up and they question the government and they question the authority and the people also support. So safety is the major concern here, not only in terms of uh, COVID-19 situation, but other situations as well. Then number four is uh, standard infrastructure. And number five is survey, surveillance and service. Although, you know, most of the ambassadors from Korea who are overseas, they are uh, considering 3T, 3T formula of Korea, like testing, tracing and treatment. Uh, you know, here in this fifth objective called survey, sur uh, surveillance and service, this uh, V is missing here, survey, surveillance and service. This, these three elements were, the, were in the background that has led to the emergence of this 3T formula of Korea being known to the world. So this survey, surveillance and service. So what this survey is about, it is about sharing data, collecting data. Then surveillance is observing people, uh, teaching them in a, in, a, in a right manner and ensure that the information is reaching out, not only to the, to the big cities, but also to the villages. So that is, what, that is one of the areas where developing countries should also look for. Like in most of the developing countries, there is a characteristics that only those who are connected digitally or who are in the big cities or small cities, they only get information. But at the same time, the village people, the uh, rural areas, they uh, uh, rural areas and the community involved with them, they do not get proper information. And information does not mean only about uh, does not only mean guiding people about like washing hands you know injecting people then getting some medicine not not that not those information but the information of responsibilities being carried out from the government and gov uh, central government local government and the general government bodies who are responsible in delivering health facility for the rural and the urban areas so this is the key area where Korea has been a great success because they share information with all the people, despite of like uh, gender, gender, uh, uh, rural capability, community spread, this kind of thing. So because of these five star objectives that they came up in 2011, this five star had uh, uh, this uh, objectives had helped them a lot so i was uh, talking about this uh, government responsibility thing so how they respond it is being shared in the public in korea like how kcdc respond respond so they respond from central disaster and safety countermeasure headquarters they are the head watchdog and headed by the prime minister in Korea, like, you know, unlike India, president is more active here, but prime minister is a constitutional post. Like in India, we have presidential post as constitutional uh, 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 post. So the prime minister in Korea, he looks after this and it is constituted of, uh, there is a vice head also from the minister of uh, health and welfare. And uh, number two, Vice head is also there called a Minister of Interior and Safety. So these three people are mainly responsible for monitoring the KCDC. And apart from that, there are other relevant ministries and local government bodies. Central Disaster Management Headquarters is also there. And Control Disease Control uh, Central Disease Control Headquarters and their uh, counterparts are also being headed by the director of KCDC. So this is the kind of a structure. Why I am sharing this structure is because unlike India, here in Korea, they have a system and it's like the system is not only uh, existing in the form of uh, government bodies, 
but they are connected directly with the people like people they can ask questions they ask and they are very account uh, the uh, officers are accountable and if they do not respond it can be a media issue big issue and uh, the prime minister will be uh, held accountable so in many of the cases uh, the prime minister had to resign also in many cases so it is like uh, although it's not a political thing but uh, the systems are monitored very well uh, which is a kind of lesson to all the developing countries including india to not only make the system but to monitor the system also especially in this kind of pandemic uh and because of that pan government counter measures are being supported by the headquarters and uh, minister of uh, interior and safety in korea they uh, head this anyways this was uh, this was all about the uh, background of the uh, government systems uh, but what they did uh, in terms of classifying the cases is a, is a very important thing to learn for the public and uh, and the students in korea they are considering the covid 19 cases as confirmed case suspected case and patients under in investigation like pui so these are the three classifications that has been made by uh, korea so confirmed case as you all know like after testing if they found corona positive then they are listed under confirmed case and the treatment is being uh, done by the korean government side till now all the patients including foreigners in korea they are treated free of cost like korean government is not charging and uh, it is not only for the korean citizens or the korean residents who are from different country but also short term foreigners were also included in this you will be surprised to know that even the illegal immigrants here in korea who came from uh, different countries they were also treated free of cost and they had been ensured through notification that even if they are suspected that they, they should not be worried about getting caught but to uh, report to the authorities and they and they will not be asked about their visas so it is it was a kind of zero tolerance towards covid 19 so from and it is not the, a new case like it it happened from uh, april itself like in april the the government here so including seoul government uh, we came up with uh, this kind of notification also because there were uh, uh, you know complaints from the different communities uh, from humanitarian grounds that uh, there are some illegal immigrants too who are very much worried that what happens if they are uh, suspected or confirmed of uh, Uh, of this uh, covid 19 so these are the uh, like uh, humanitarian methods to connect uh, people um, across the globe in korea so these were one of, these were some of the reasons for which korea has been applauded by uh, uh, the foreign media also in the past uh, till now they are treating uh, all the people who are living in korea uh, free of cost but yes there are uh, other charges if somebody is coming from uh, uh, different countries on uh, like tourist visa uh, because still some tourists are coming or some short term people are coming here so for them the uh, immigration and the korean government has planned some kind of uh, some kind of quarantine facilities where they are charging but in terms of uh, uh, testing and treating it is free of cost till now so in terms of action plans and measures by the government uh, in the picture you can see the first picture here he is the president uh, of korea moon jae in and these are uh, some of the health workers not only comprised of the hospital ones but also from the military so in the big from the beginning itself when korea saw an influx of uh, covid 19 and the expansion of covid 19 cases especially in march last month of march and april first week they declared a medical emergency in the beginning they did not wait un unlike developing countries korea did not wait they followed the policy of zero tolerance from the beginning itself so when there was a like a, a cluster confirmed cases they acted very differently very effectively and they even requested the military soldiers also to have training and go to the public reach to the public and the public services because they thought 
they anticipated that there can be a, a lack of uh, health workers so because of that the government tried to negotiate with the military uh, personnel and they ordered them and collectively they came into action so this in in the picture these uh, people in white clothes they are not only uh, from the hospital uh, background health workers but from the military also and uh, is here's the president who was reaching out to public and uh, monitoring very effectively and there was huge public pressure as well till now also korea has huge public pressure in terms of uh, health and safety so the government is not about like uh, being unreachable but it is very very efficiently reachable like uh, there is a difference uh, like uh, un unlike developing countries if you call to some uh, uh, here a state government or central government authorities state is called provincial so provincial government authorities or the central government authorities all or the general government body uh, uh, bodies in the in the local areas in the countryside they respond within seconds it is not like they are uh, since they are government bodies they are not going to respond they they have a zero tolerance in responding the people queries also so because of that medical institutions they were accessed very easily and uh, they could access the overseas travel histories also and because of that early detection uh, detection happened they they could easily contain and covid 19 screening stations were also assembled in many parts of korea and the the focus is not only seoul seoul which is the capital is not only the focus the focus is whole korea so this is also one of the driving forces and the diagnostic test, tests were also uh, in progress on large scale like it can be seen in the slide there were 118 testing facilities and uh, these are just testing facilities but there are some designated medical uh, centers too which were shared in the beginning of uh, february to all the korean people and the uh, foreigners residing here so all the, the the whole korea was aware aware about the facilities from the beginning this is also one of the reasons for for them to uh, contain effectively and apart from that there are epidemiological uh, investigations uh, on the vaccine side government has frankly said to the public that uh, they are working on it but they are not very hopeful that very soon it is going to be developed so they are working with the other international organizations in that case but the uh, but the korean government is very much committed in containing the virus unless they get the vaccine they are trying their best to contain the virus in korea the people uh, people are using masks uh, and if they are suspected they obviously go to the testing but uh, in, in the hospital but uh, still they are worried uh, although in in the overseas people are considering korea um, to be safe but it is not 100% case uh, safe uh, every day like 10 or 12 uh, 10 to 15 cases are uh, being reported on a daily basis uh, although it is contained because only 2.2% is a death rate and most of them like who were more than 80 years of age have died in korea so there is a positivity but at the same time it is very uncertain that when the vaccine uh, is going to be uh, in the public so some of the strategies include drive through testing stations this were the stations these were the stations that have have been made by the korean authorities in order to contain not only the people but also to disinfect the vehicles because in korea there are many vehicles especially the four wheelers are in uh, huge in number so government is trying to convince people not to use for uh, these vehicles 
a lot, but to uh, stay in home and uh, to uh, cooperate with the authorities. But at the same time, they are providing these testing stations. In a in a, a couple of weeks, they developed this kind of testing centers in March. Uh, on like kind of uh, on they were tackling the issue on war basis, like in wars. Many bunkers are being made in the same manner. These uh, these are the testing centers for cars, not only people. So they were checking. This this is how they were uh, they made. Then other testing centers were also made in the form of uh, this kind of camp camps, and it was not focused only to Seoul but throughout Korea. So they were very uh, fast in building this kind of infrastructure. This is uh, one of the characteristics that is very common to the Chinese counterpart as well. You know that uh, the, when, when Wuhan hospital were an, was unable to contain the cases, they also came up with, with the construction of hospitals. But in Korea, since they had many buildings, like government buildings were there, universities were there, uh, hostel uh, dormitories were there, some government uh, agencies uh, building were also there so they changed those uh, buildings into quarantine centers uh, but unlike china they uh, the koreans were more focused on testing centers building te testing centers these are some of the examples and uh, this covid 19 testing station and it was a uh, uh, you know, it was not installed only uh, on the airports or railway stations, but also the uh, the places with uh, crowd. So one of the examples that uh, I would like to share uh, among this digital technology is uh, when uh, this uh, COVID-19 was uh, in the initial stage, like in February, in February itself, with the help of uh, disinfection channel, Koreans tried to export many uh, hello yeah uh, they tried to export many technologies to the world. Although Korea was suffering, but all Hello. Korea was yes, yeah, yeah. It, there is a there is a video. There is a okay, video okay. that yeah. Okay, so, okay. so one of the machines that they developed in the beginning uh, phase was this one. Like uh, I was also involved. You you can see this is a mobile thermometry disinfection channel. So, you know, although this came up to India also and uh, it it went to other countries also uh, as an export oriented uh, material. But Korea was proactive in uh, uh, utilizing this kind of machines to export to the world and uh, revive its economy because they were, uh, the Korean side, the Korean uh, traders and the Korean manufacturers, they were quite aware that this COVID-19 is going to be on, it's, it's going to be on large basis. It is going to affect huge mass and it may affect the economy because they learned from the Chinese uh, experience and because of that not only they came up with this kind of uh, disinfection channel for exporting you might have uh, have heard that how Korean Korean uh, manufacturers were interested in providing the um, testing kits also so this is one of the examples of uh, that strategy
sir, sir better to explain this video as it is not uh, sound is not coming okay okay so this this was one of the examples uh, through which uh, this uh, korean uh, traders and manufacturers they tried to gauge the uh, to try to access the global market with the use of covid 19 products this is one of the products actually so they were not only focusing on building structures infrastructures but also at the same time they were trying to access the global market and revive the economy and right now also they are doing the same but uh, in case of developing countries we are still trying to uh, somehow somehow prevent ourselves but in uh, in in case of korea they are trying uh, to manufacture not only this uh, technological things but you know you will be surprised to know that korea is uh, supplying masks to many countries and considering uh, this covid-19 as an opportunity uh, to to uh, access the global market so these are some of the points that can be uh, observed by the developing countries in order to uh, you know not only contain but also to uh, to progress in the upcoming uh, years uh, there is another a technological advancement uh, being used for the public these days in Korea is, uh, you know, QR checking. They call it QR checking. So when you go to some events, public events, although a government is not promoting uh, public events and they are discouraging people to um, uh, not to attend this kind of uh, big events, but uh, the small meetings are uh, not discouraged the, many of them are still meeting so in case of small meetings they have come up with this qr checking qr checking is a kind of uh, you know we have whatsapp in our country same like that uh, the koreans have kakao talk like kakao is a kind of whatsapp uh, app so mo almost all the koreans they use this app so when they go to attend small events the host they capture the qr and uh, it is being checked that they are suspected of covid 19 or not means symptoms are being checked and uh, they are trying to trace because in some cases what happened is in the beginning they were not uh, detect, det uh, detected because of the uh, temperature and uh, like variations but later it was found that they were confirmed cases. So in order to tackle those uh, situations and those uh, um, instances, they have come up with QR check-in system. This is how they check the phone, they capture the QR, and then after checking the temperature, they allow us to enter inside. In many, uh, in many events, they are following this model and in case of uh, immigration they are class they are classifying these they have classified the suspects into two categories one is symptomatic and another is asymptomatic so for the symptomatic cases all travelers whether they are korean passport holders or foreign passport holders they are tested at airport so while entering Korea at the entry ports in Incheon, all the Koreans and foreigners are tested. And if they are positive, they are directly transferred to hospital or the residential treatment centers that uh, have been designated by the KCDC that I discussed in the uh, beginning of my presentation. So if they are positive, they are being directly transferred to hospital or residential treatment centers. And if they are neg negative, they will be self quarantined for 14 days. Uh, but uh, sh for short term visitors here, they have to be quarantined at facilities. Yeah, and it is chargeable. But in case of those visitors who are having a proper address here, they uh, will be only uh, uh, encouraged to quarantine themselves for 14 days and uh, not go out. And uh, all the visitors like uh, including the temporary and the permanent or and the residents 
they have to uh, install one app and through this app they are closely monitoring they they monitor through the cameras also installed in each colonies in korea so they monitor and they ensure that if any foreigner or koreans are not going to follow this 14 days quarantine uh, uh, home quarantine or self quarantine um, order they are going to be imprisoned or imposed fine on uh, on a huge basis so this is the case of uh, symptomatic ones those who are having some symptoms but those who are not having symptoms they also have to self quarantine for 14 days uh, but but for foreign nationals who are having long term visas they also uh, have to go for this self quarantine um, policy for 14 days but in case of this short term visas because there there are many europeans and the us nationals who are having uh, short term visas of korea especially for 3 months there are many so for them the rules are different uh, they can they have a uh, testing uh, process also uh, but at the same time they have to be quarantined uh, 14 days also but uh, they can be charged as well so exemptions include those who are tested at airport and it goes up to 2 days and active monitoring is also a common thing that is being practiced in this uh, in cases of uh, those with uh, without symptoms so these are some of the rules being followed for the immigration in korea and because of these uh, policies and the the preventive measures this is the data that has been shared by the korean government in terms of testing so the total number of tests which is being performed till now is uh, more than 150000 the conclusion of the tests that were achieved was 147000 more than 147000 and the positivity rate it means those who were found as a confirmed case it was 0.9% so this is how they have contained they are testing from the beginning they had the testing kits also so this is how they are tackling the situation and there are many frequent questions regarding the covid-19 treatment in south korea to the to the government authorities here and uh, still people are very much curious to know that is there any vaccine for covid-19 <laughs> and uh, not yet this is the answer from the uh, korean government side and uh, there are other questions like if there is no conclusive treatment for covid-19 how are patients being treated this is also one of the very common uh, questions that is being asked in the in the korean uh, uh, domain and the answer from the government side is the treatment for covid-19 is a is like symptomatic treatment and treating the symptoms of the disease like not the disease but if somebody is having high fever then they medicate them uh, them on the basis of this uh, uh, high fever medicine if they are having they if somebody is having some other symptoms the treat, symptoms are being treated it is a case by case and it is followed by all the doctors and the medical centers in korea uh, there are there is another treatment it is like there is no targeted therapy but uh, they are seeking they are trying to treat the sick cells it does not mean that the virus is not treatable they most of the doctors here they still think that the virus is treatable but there is no uh, uh, like a specific medicine or the vaccine that can treat 100% and which can be uh, used on large basis so it is case by case and it, it has been uh, very effective Uh, although there were 297 and 98 deaths but yeah if uh, if we consider them exceptions korea has been performing um, um, very nicely because of the infrastructural facilities and the uh, and the zero tolerance on containment so the another question which is very much uh, uh, common in the korean domain is does the state uh, government 
cover treatment expenses for patients confirmed of having COVID-19? Yes, in accordance with the if infectious disease control and prevention act treatment is covered by the local or central government uh, local or central government here means the facilities being offered by the korean government which is installed in all the uh, all the areas of korea including rural urban and semi urban the same shall supply uh, shall apply to both koreans and foreigners as i was discussing like there in foreigners also there are many categories categories short term visitors then uh, permanent residents illegal immigrants so all categories of foreigners are being treated free of cost so the point is why measures are more effective than developing countries in korea so in my point of view i think unlike developing countries korea had experience of responding to virus diseases like mers in 2015 and sars in 2003 so they have uh, ex they have experience of dealing with these uh, kind of diseases and the another um, reason can be like uh, the com good communication with china which is not uh, always in uh, the official communication but uh, their uh, their uh, communication with china and since they are very close to china they can uh, anticipate what kind of problems are going to happen like in the case of wuhan also Uh, they could anticipate that what were what will be the upcoming challenges and the problems that korea is going to face so if you remember uh, the global uh, outreach of this uh, corona uh, uh, virus in the beginning china was number 1 and after that korea was number 2 look so the korea followed the pattern was like china korea and japan was not very uh, uh, very much influenced but korea was very much influenced and you will be surprised to know that uh, korea the korean government did not uh, ban the chinese travelers also for a long time because of many uh, official communication as well as the uh, dependency uh, uh, of uh, economic uh, bargain and economic uh, aspects so because of those reasons uh, korea could not uh, been able to uh, ban the chinese travelers there but at the same time they could uh, learn so many uh, aspects and the uh, possibilities of uh, covid-19 uh, uh, from china so this is a uh, th th this was the number two reason number three reason is uh, the tensions between the north and south like north korea and south korea as most of you might be aware that there is always a tension between north korea and south korea and because they are the technically the war is not and war has not ended it is on ceasefire so because of that there is always escala escalations between north and south and this has also uh, contributed in containing the virus because they are always the, the korean authorities and the people here are always on alert basis in our case we also have tensions with uh, be, between india and pakistan but we are not on the uh, you know uh, alert zone always we but in, in unlike uh india koreans are very uh, very alert always with their system and uh, with their uh, war techniques so because that also has helped korea uh, in dealing with this uh, covid-19 and achieving this test trace and treat so this 3t model they, uh, always the korean government is uh, focusing and uh, as i said earlier also that ambassadors Uh, from korea who are working overseas they also uh, focus try to focus on this test trace uh, treat uh, methodology so the but the underlying reasons in my view were three one is being uh, two is discussed in this uh, slide one is not discussed but uh, these three reasons i think were very important uh, which helped korea in dealing with the virus so before concluding uh, i would like to focus on the current policies of south korea uh, observing the future of korean economy and the covid-19 situation in the global economy so the ministry of science south korea has come up with new digital new deal so the korean government has recently 3 days 4 days back they came with this new deal 
and that new deal is focused on digitalized digitalizing the infrastructure it is not like they are satisfied with the current digital infrastructure so we can imagine that how they are trying ambitiously uh, to be a leader in in the era of covid 19 so they have spent 48.6 billion dollars and uh, this will be spent till 2025 in order to digitalize infrastructure and increase state investment in key cutting edge cutting edge technologies because of covid 19 like india korea also in korea also so many people have lost their jobs so the government data says that uh, all these lost jobs will be compensated by creating some 900000 jobs and they are going to achieve these numbers by 2025 with the investment of us dollar 48.6 billion he is the current prime uh, president of korea moon jae in and he, it is his dream project to achieve uh, amid covid 19 and why they, uh, they have come up with this uh, digital economy uh, uh, digital infrastructure because they think seoul is uh, incomplete without the digital communication in covid 19 and that is why they are making effort to use 5g and artificial intelligence ai uh, in in the industries in like all the in, in, in industries which are uh, being connected in in the korea uh, ministry and as well as the uh, traders through ai and 5g so that in in future if vaccine is not generated or if korea faces another pandemic of a different nature then in that case also the government wants to ensure that korea would be uh, uh, like capable to contain the pandemic and uh, protect its citizens and the and the residents here so these are some of the upcoming policies of uh, korea so why this uh, has been added in the presentation because we need to understand that uh, although there is a there is a problem in india i know uh, i also know that in my family is also there and many uh, students friends are also there they are suffering i know and uh, i uh, always observe but what we can learn from south korea is not only institu institutionalizing the infrastructure is important but their implementation is very important we have to ensure that nobody is left whether they are in the rural areas or the urban areas whether they are capable of going to the private hospitals or or they are not so all the there should be a like conclusive policy where all the people can be uh, can access the uh, government centers and at the same time the government uh, can facilitate the government uh, uh, officers to contain the virus and at the same time protect themselves because if government servants are going to be in trouble obviously uh, there will be no hope left korea has followed that kind of uh, objective in the beginning and they had been succeeded so far and uh, not only the uh, uh, they are not convinced only with the current situation they are trying their best to do something in the future also and this new deal policy and initiative is a shining is a shining example how they are going to contain the virus so it seems like uh, we are running out of time uh, i will try to conclude it uh, just wait yeah i will i will try to conclude it uh, by showing some of the slides which shows that india in india and korea how we are cooperating so in terms of india korea cooperation sd biosensor uh, has become first foreign company from korean side to manufacture covid 19 test kits to india and uh, she is the the lady here her excellency she is uh, our ambassador in uh, from india in korea and she has been very active proactively helping uh, the korean authorities uh, to access the the india uh, the indian market and the indian uh, uh, like you know icmr things they had been very active in uh, communicating with the indian counterparts at the same time from south korea side the 
the uh, ambassador in Korea, they have donated some uh, 25,000 masks also to Korean war veterans, veterans in India. Uh, there is an NGO called Chikitsa. So they have uh, provided this mask to them. So before con uh, concluding the lecture, I would like to uh, focus on these three points and uh, uh, finish the lecture. So practice safety concern is not a common print, electronic, and social media terminology, which, which we have seen that in the, in the past few days, this, uh, this, you know, everybody is coming, like all the models, stars, film actors, and some politicians coming and saying that practice, please practice safety. And it is being used also in, on various platforms. But in my observation, uh, based on the Korean uh, uh, story, I can say that this is just a media terminology although we have to be aware about that but serious infrastructure policy and its implementation is the answer to covid 19 if we see uh, if we consider korea into an in, into account and uh, another point that i would like to make is direct engagement of a state machinery is really needed in tackling the situation and uh, zero tolerance in human on human spread uh, shall be the answer so by these words uh, i would like to conclude my lecture and uh, thank you for listening uh, with patience uh, i know uh, you might have been uh, encountering some problems also uh, of because of this covid 19 i wish we will overcome this problem and we will stay strong and we will triumph together thank you for listening to me yeah. uh, thank you sir thank you very much for uh, such a informative session sir uh, sir, uh, we have many questions, maybe yes. around 15 to 20 questions, but very difficult to ask all these in a short period of time. So we will uh, compile the questions and I will ask two questions out of this. Yeah. And uh, uh, remaining, you can reply in your through your mail, sir. I will okay. uh, give you the questions. You can mail it and uh, we will uh, exchange it. Yes, yes. So, yeah, yeah. My, my email ID can be shared. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So thank you, sir. So there are a few questions. Uh, the first one is Jananda Devnath. He is uh, asked. Uh, Jandeep Devnath is asking that what should developing countries like us do to overcome the infrastructural related issues? Hmm. As we, yes, sir. So. Oh, yes, uh, Mr. Devnath, thank you uh, very much for asking this question. Actually, this question is very uh, not only important, but also very relevant in this COVID-19 situation. Because if we do not build infrastructures, uh, our future cannot be brighter. So yeah, in terms of India, like I, will, I would be focusing more on India uh, as a developing country. So like for developing countries, public private partnership is the answer to this uh, question. So if public and private partnership is not going to achieve, we, we cannot achieve the excellent infrastructure. In Korea, what happened is in like in 1970s, they uh, focused on manufacturing. And while manufacturing, many uh, Korean uh, manufacturers, including Samsung, they uh, Samsung and Hyundai was also there, the, the two major companies in Korea. They achieved a lot of success. They earned a lot. But the government here, that time uh, the, the president was Park Chung-hee, although he was an uh, authoritarian leader. But what he did was he came up with three uh, major economic reforms, like three, uh, three major economic reforms. And it was five year econ economic pl plan, which went in three stages. So at that time, the current government at that time, they uh, joined hand with, they joined hand with Samsung, Hyundai and other manufacturers that time. And they started building infrastructure in a very effective manner because, and because of that, till now that legacy has been uh, followed by the like uh, later governments as, and uh, Korea has achieved this kind of uh, infrastructural development. So our answer is, uh, our answer is lying in this background. We have to develop public partnership, uh, public uh, private partnership. Uh, but at the same time, like our our current government uh, has said also, I don't know how much it is going to be implemented. But yes, the self-reliance 
uh, issue has been raised by our uh, prime minister but in order to do so we will have to strengthen make in india policy and it should not only be a be a just a policy on paper but it should be implemented not only in mumbai or delhi or uh, uh, gujarat but it should be in each and every part of the country like uh, like i am from bihar you are from tripura or like there are people from different parts of india in each part of india make in india should be implemented then only this public partnership uh, public private partnership can be anticipated or achieved so we have to strengthen manufacturing uh, in real terms not not only on paper so, uh, yeah. so we have to uh, implement make in india policy throughout the country and number 2 with the help of uh, public and private organizations there should be partnership and the partnerships uh, should be based on building infrastructure these two uh, are the these two uh, points can uh, must be followed yeah okay sir very true very true sir uh, sir actually there is uh, one query i would say not the yeah. question uh, that what is the present status uh, regarding the preparation of vaccine in south korea is there any update about yeah preparing so, actually um, south korean researchers are working on that but uh, they are not uh, very uh, euphoric about this uh, vaccine so yeah. in the beginning they tried but they are now relying more on uh, the on the yeah. western countries and the us so they have recently like 3 days back the ministry here also has said that korea will support uh, through its infrastructure and uh, through its uh, uh, scientists Uh, they will, they are going to help the international uh, organizations uh, in in the fight with covid 19 so as such korea has not been able to uh, kind of uh, invent or to create some kind of vaccine uh, but they are they are trying to invest uh, by joining hands with other international organizations so it is a kind of limitation for korea okay sir thank you sir uh, sir from uh, one more question is very uh, short one that is as the korea uh, south korea is the means uh, importer exporter of uh, mask i think so yes. the a huge number of mask export from south korea so is in relation to that is mask is enough for protecting uh, us from virus as per you sir no uh, what is the scenario Hmm. mask is not an uh, not 100% effective tool to uh, protect ourselves mask is just a kind of uh, you know uh, to minimize the infection and to minimize the community infection so because of that in korea also like more than uh, like 80% of the people they are uh, they are following the mask rules but you will often find 20% uh, or like mm-hmm. out of 120 or 25 people not following also but because you know they uh, they think that if they are not in not going with the community uh, events or if they are not in public even if they do not use mask it is okay so but mask is not the answer mask is just a kind of uh, a tool to protect ourselves from the community spread so mask is not the answer testing is also not the complete answer complete answer is vaccination and digital technology because only digitalization can a uh, defeat uh, uh, the the covid 19 if un- un- unless the uh, vaccine is not developed but yeah in korea mask uh, the most, uh, like 80% of the people are using mask uh, and also they are like treating the symptoms as we uh, mentioned in the lecture also though they are trying to treat the symptoms and th- those who are not having that sy- uh, symptoms they are just trying to follow the mask so they are exporting mask uh, but i think india should not import but rather than uh, exporting uh, sorry importing uh, we must focus on producing mask in india and uh, it should not come from other states but each states should have their own mask production unit because this covid 19 is going to continue at least for a couple of months even if the vaccine comes it is not going to end just in a in a month or or like in a couple of months it is going to uh, to remain and in order to uh, uh, you know protect ourselves from economic depression i am not i am using economic depression word not recession because 
if the situation continues we are we are going to achieve economic depression in a negative manner and to protect ourselves i must say that the mask and kit make uh, units like manufacturing units it should not be only uh, be focused on mumbai delhi or other different uh, like big states it should uh, it should be made in each and every states like bihar tripura uh, uh, up other states also then then only we can protect ourselves from economic depression otherwise we can be in economic depression if because it is continuing so we should learn this kind of things from korea uh, thank you sir thank you very much sir we are very much satisfied uh, with your reply sir and uh, you have covered everything about uh, the present scenario of covid 19 in uh, south korea including from as you have said that uh, everywhere the scenario is same the only difference is that the infrastructure and not only that how to implement it it is yes. most important thing so uh, uh, apart from that digitalization the uh, five star objectives kcdc how to how it works and the most importantly triple t that is uh, test trust and treat these all are you have, you have covered in wonderful manner and i hope this will help us to in our country to uh, fight against this covid 19 sir thank you once again sir for inviting for accepting our invitation and thanks again sir namaskar sir uh, yeah thank you thank you you uh, thank you and uh, uh, i would like to especially thanks to all the students uh, they might be not going through very uh, like easy time it's a hard time uh, but yes we have to uh, stay strong and definitely we will be um, uh, overcoming this uh, covid 19 very very soon yeah so with these words have a nice day all of you yeah thank you sir thank you sir good day sir so we are coming to the end of the first day of international webinar now before ending the session i'd like to convey a few messages or instruction tomorrow we will get uh, the url again at 8 o'clock in the morning 8 8 am so be ready for that and be on time uh, be at 10 am sharp tomorrow also uh, so we will cover four more lectures we will start with the technical session first in the second day and we will end with the uh, validity function so thank you once again for joining us and uh, i hope we will meet again tomorrow and for patience sharing i thank one and all thank you